Just say something. Man, this is uh, not ready. I'll have, to, I'll have to probably get up in a bit to go grab some food from upstairs, but like, fine, I'm ready. You do that. You eat your food. I gotta get to the roll twenty. You gotta get to the roll twenty. Roll twenty released a bunch of free stuff today too. I haven't looked at it yet. Oh, Did you guys I also see... have to plug in my TV slash second monitor okay. and turn that off. Everyone is, is not this... ready. We took a week off. We don't know what's going on, but. <laughs> Somebody's gonna drop some apocalypse zombies on us. Some CR2, and uh, he will flavor them as coronavirus. <laughs> We're doing it. We're topical here at BDG, but. Oh, crap. crap. The, the, the cable's not here. We're all not ready. Ross is typing real hard. Time for Spoopy Kingmaker. Thank you all for your support. Thank you all for letting me take a week off to go celebrate my birthday. The, uh, the quest for my phylactery is underway because I'm not willing to turn 30. But <laughs> I feel you. I'm, I'm gonna turn thirty this year. Oh, no, I feel can't like do I it. turned thirty on February fourteenth. No, oh, God, yeah, when oh, your child was born. Was awesome. <laughs> we feel super. We feel super. Fair enough. Good. I'm gonna. Oh, I'm gonna scratch my leg. My leg itches. Okay, cool. Here we go. Time has come. Gotta do the in character reflection stuff. Ross, you at the table, so we can put a voice with a with a picture. We'll start from the top, go to the bottom. We'll start with Vin. Hello. My name is Finn Saul Jimerson. I am the local druid extraordinaire and I'm a, a friendly friend of nature for the area. My role so far has been helping the party get around the local wildlife and um, helping them with the knowledge of the nature due to the fact that I, unlike the, unlike in, unlike the rest of them, am a local native born and raised in the stolen lands and as such this is my home and i have a very large personal investment at the moment i am just kind of trying to figure out what's going on with everything in the area lots of the local sort of like organizations and villages and family units and whatnot that i'm aware of and friends with and all that are being attacked and as such i have a very strong moral obligation to get rid of them and either way i am looking forward to hopefully helping getting this all taken care of and saving the day. Also, Tommy, I think we're still on the other group's map. We are. That's because we haven't moved you to a map yet, because they're right now. I'll, I'll move you okay. somewhere else. So Ooh, I guess I should. Secrets. I, should, I, should, I, should. I just noticed it is all. My apologies. You're right. You're right. Fair enough. Take the hero point. Good for you. Devin's next. So, yes, it's everybody's most favorite, lovable, sweet, kind-hearted, better-than-you aristocrat, Devin Devereaux Dubois. Um, enjoying the trip as we go so far. Um, see, I need to have, like, remind me of what we did, because I forget, because it was so long ago. Because Tommy had to go off and be a good human being and enjoy, like, his life. Yeah. A life that doesn't involve us. How dare I? Well, if y'all lived in Kansas City... Move to Kansas, maybe not the, the Europeans. I don't want to, I don't wish America on my worst enemies, but. <laughs> what, uh, what was the last thing we did? I remember we talked to some squid people and then, and then there was, somebody killed the unicorn. And then we went to an old dwarven tower and it was full of Zambos and the party oh, almost oh, died. Oh, the little, the little, the little fey fellow, the little fey fellow's mayor. Yeah. I love the little fey mayor. Um, <laughs> he's awesome. So I'm really excited for that. I want to incorporate him into our kingdom when we finally make it. So he's the first person that we're signing a treaty with. So I'm in love with the with the tree people in faith. Good enough for me. Hero point is yours. I think it's I think it's Elric next. I'm not looking at OBS right now. Yes, indeed. Elric von Almar. Well, I am playing Elric von Almar, the wizard, the real noble who isn't broke. Um who finances most of the uh, group's activities and uh, helps out mostly with his vast academic knowledge. Aside from that, uh, well, he's a bit uh, of a snobby noble and uh, a bit of a pansy because he's still very young, barely did any adventuring ever, and caught any hardship. So, currently, not feeling the best after almost dying to a horde of zombies and being thrown into uh, a different dimension almost by some godlike being. So that was really scary. Currently, he's questioning his reasoning for adventuring out here, but 
Thankfully, we could be meet, met with some uh, quirky little creature who wanted to take us back to his people, who apparently live somewhere uh, at the edge of a forest, like a huge tree. So I'm looking forward to that. Good enough. The hero point is yours, and I think it's next is Emmy, but Emmy wasn't here. So, Trezen. Yeah, uh, hi, I'm playing uh, Trezen the Infinite, the other wizard of the group. And yeah, I'm, uh, I'm sure I can't really remember last session. I was quite tired. I know we almost died. That's the and important then we part met of someone death. little and funny. Yeah, that's that's a fair assessment of last time, I feel like, yeah. And uh, yeah, in character, uh, yeah, I'm quite curious, obviously quite curious about the tower, what uh, what God planned there with the, with his followers. And I'm quite curious where it will go with our new mayor in our group. Wait, so you missed someone little and funny who's not me? Pretty much. <laughs> Competition. And I forget. Was Chewie here last time? Did we have a Chewie? Yes. We had, we had a Chewie. Yes. Take it, Ragnar. All right. The Dwarven Ruins proved to be challenging for us. The zombies are the undying legion, whatever whatever the wizards called them, were tough. And we had to retreat, but it was a tactical retreat. We'll come back there when we're more prepared. But I've not given up hope on finding the Dwarven Ruins. The new friend, I can't remember his name, but it was, I called him a bird. And he was upset about that, or what he even was. But I, I'm going to call him the bird for now. Told us under his him. king's tree is a massive underground network, and I'm ecstatic to find my the ancient ruins of my people. And I am playing Ragnar. He is a dwarf, and he worships Torag, and he's a cleric of Torag. Good enough for me. All right, here points all around. On we go. The journey through the northern ends of the, <clears throat> excuse me, the northern ends of the forest takes you guys a couple of days. You do eventually cross back over the Thorn Ford and then follow the river down. Ferris, his name was, this whole time is just on and on and on and on and on about mostly nothing. Anytime he has his own like time to talk, he's either spouting non sequiturs or like all over smiles giving smiles all the love att attention affection and other a words as well if anybody has any questions for him you certainly or like any other role play stuff you want to do with the squad checks to roll so on and so forth you got all the time in the world to do it now well i'd like to bring up we embar i embarrassed the druid before i went to bed <laughs> By, break, by telling Ferris about the Druid's love interest. Oh, yes, yes, I yeah. remember that. That was very good. <laughs> and he and he deemed me the diffuser after defusing the argument between him and the Druid by bringing that up, and I felt very proud about myself getting that title. Official diffuser of the kingdom of Ferris, indeed. But anybody got anything for him at all? Or do we want to just immediately jump forward? No, other than, I don't like, know. me wanting to get on his good side as much as possible, because I knew, like, hey, the Fae are really awesome and pretty, and if people think that I'm hanging out with the Fae, they'll think I'm awesome and pretty, so he's very much sucking. <laughs> Sounds about right. Okay, so as you guys actually, on that note, as you get to the Thorn Ford, let me get survival checks real fast from anybody who can roll them. Damn. Powerful summoner is powerful. I, I take it Ross isn't at his computer right now. Probably yeah. going to get that food. He's going to go get that food. I'll, I'll roll for him. 
Uh, See, Devin is useful, and who needs local boy? And who needs local boy? Local, local boy. boy is here. <laughs> oh, hi, local boy. Would you roll? Oh, my God. Uh, roll survival for us. <laughs> <laughs> the wizard who never left home is being a wizard who never left home. <laughs> How very fitting. <laughs> Word. Cooksy AIDS. That's dirt. That's some Man. dirt. So it's only Vin that sees it as you guys get to the Thornford. The tracks have been concealed. But as you go, like, moving around, like, where that pit was and in that area, there are, like, the telltale signs in the region of a cat about the size of rose panther come through the region and it's like as you go looking around and you spot them and you look around you do find humanoid boot prints as well unless there happens to be another ranger and his cat friend running through the area it tracks that those tracks are probably your brother's tracks oh um, we track the over I'll kind of like pause, walk over to the tracks, kind of look them up and down. Smiles. Does it smell like brother to you? He. And I guess I should roll survival for smiles? Yeah, or yeah, something? sure. Go for it. Well, I mean, he has scent, so I don't know. That means he gets a pretty big buff. Okay, so I. I, I that's like a plus 10, survival. I think. Mm-hmm. He gets a 14. That's good enough for me. <laughs> well, that's so. a bad roll. Well, no, I'm not. Never mind. I'm just. I'm gonna try really hard to not be gross for the next three hours because I do get like allergies around this time of the year. So I'm real sight to see at the moment. But uh, yeah, smiles goes and and then nods in affirmative. Ferris flies over and just. Oh, what's what's she got for that one? What is she smelling? What was he smelling? Is this important? Oh, uh, I just think the tracks are of my brother. He was heading northbound, so it makes sense that these are his, potentially. A human followed by a large cat. Makes sense for him to go this path. What's he doing <laughs> going north for? There's nothing up there, but, well, we're turning south busy. before we get to us, but not much there. Well, there's the trading post up that way. And Ferris nods. That's the direction he's heading, the trading post. Well, what's he doing there? Oh, just going to trade. You know how it is. He's got some errands to run. Have you ever had to go and like get some groceries or whatnot? Of course. Someone? Had to go then... get groceries. Of course we have errands. That's the reason I ask is because last we knew, and frankly, our tree's not super far from this trading post. It was abandoned. There was no one there. The trading post to the what? Yes. And he like grabs a stick from the ground and begins drawing a very simple map of like you are here here is tree and like triangulates where uh oleg's would be pretty accurately there's no one there not at all when, when was when the last time you saw that that uh, was uh by human reckoning uh human followed by r i'm gonna try really hard to not slip into human rayla as i'm doing this but it's, it's gonna be difficult <laughs> by human reckoning perhaps oh oh snaps his fingers a couple times four or five days ago not very long i look over at the rest of the group concerned mm. we had left that place has it been only been like what a week since we left olex it's been probably closer to two. Oh. It's been two weeks since we left, but... Wait, so there was no one... Okay, that is very concerning, friend. Last we had checked, there were still Oleg and his wife living up there. Mm. What, when are you, when are we with the, just that place? Your, brother, How... your other brother is about to die and be turned into a zombie and try to kill us again. We need to go stop your brother before he kills us <laughs> like the last one tried to. And you have to kill your other brother! You know, I mean, I re- really oh, want no, to punch I you right now. I think we may be in trouble. We should... <laughs> now 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 there'll be no violence in the kingdom not against the pretty boy i'm afraid he might scuff his boots well uh can you tell us how did it look you said it's what's abandoned but did it look like someone cleared uh, clear out like people left or did it look like you don't think was, like, Oleg ran off rubbing yep. or struggles or something like that did it look like someone plundered the place, or did it look like someone left 
the place. Well, the walls and the buildings are still intact, but there's nobody there. No sign of supplies, no, the stables are empty. Well, didn't your brother before he left, like, say he was going to pay him a visit or something? Yeah. I remember. Yeah, that's... Yeah. I think that's why he's heading there first. Well, he needed to head to the training post to hand down. Or am I misunderstanding this when I say he had needed to head to the training post to give the letter? He was going all the way to rest off. He would certainly oh, okay. go past yeah. the training post because, like, it's on the way. It's literally on the road. Yeah. And also, besides... Also, I, think, I think he was pretty pissed, so he probably wanted to at least, at the very least, probably shout at Oleg and beat him up a bit. He would have killed Oleg. He wouldn't have shouted at Oleg. He would have killed Oleg. Let's not beat around the bush there. That's why, that's... I, said that. that's why I said at the very least. Mm -hmm. Now you too, that's what I was going at. Yeah. Either yeah. way. Oleg probably ran away. Like, didn't, didn't he and his wife move out there pretty much to get away from like civilization and all that stuff and uh, well you would probably needed to drag like people to well police what uh, he did so makes sense for him to run away basically just doing what he did just again he probably moved somewhere else maybe even further away from civilization was all like the type of person to run away from civilization i sort of like sip sip yeah, he and his wife had left Restov and founded the trading post to get away from, like, the big hullabaloo of the city. Maybe not necessarily, like, isolate in the woods, but they prefer a, a simpler, small-town kind of living. Uh, still, I don't think he left for it, like, just because, oh, uh, he, he, yeah, it wouldn't surprise me if he left because he was afraid of getting killed, and to be honest, don't blame him for that one. Yeah, well, he has a lot of crimes currently stacked up on his name. Well, if anyone can track him, it's my brother. That might be uh, six then, though. I'd hate to beat him, there, you know, though. I can make, I can assure you all of that much. How old are you, all your brother's tracks? Now I'm gonna sniff, gonna check them. Can I tell with that previous roll how old they are? Yeah, yeah, yeah. They appear to be. Uh, they're pretty old, but they're not like ancient. Maybe like a week or so. He's got a considerable head start on you and could be all the way to rest of by now, if not outright, like had gone to rest of and doubled back. As you guys were exploring Timberfall in the area around it, uh, poking around Dwarven Towers and things, he just turns towards Restov and makes a beeline. All right, well, I'll, I'll make that clear to the rest of the group. Be like, it is potentially him. After all, he is very quick through these woods. We all know them well. Uh, I'm not certain mm. if you would have met up with um, uh, uh, Oleg before Oleg would have had a chance to split. But uh, I mean, it doesn't sound like he he's uh, responsible for the disappearance because I think in that case, most of the things would still be left in the post, right? Like, he's one person; he doesn't have anything to move everything. It would it would hinder him on his own mission with the ladder. So it doesn't make sense that he's the one responsible for the disappearance. Except if he did kill him, and after that someone plundered the uh, place, but it didn't sound like that's what happened. Because in that case, I imagine that either they would trash the place if they plundered it, or they would move in. That would make Either sense, way, yeah. it would make sense for us to take another visit up to see the trading post sometime soon. Yeah. That's what I'm thinking too. But does it need our immediate attention? No. I would assume so. I'm going to think worst case scenario that local boy's brother is about to turn into a zombie and try to kill me again. So I figure that, or if we wanted to go to the actual, what was the zombie tower where we got our asses kicked because we all weren't there. So now that we've got all of us and the fantastic mayor, maybe we could take the 
Who are we talking uh, about? The zombie what? The oh, you mean those things I poked? Yeah, the old dwarf tower where we almost died. Oh, because of again. Two things. It's one. It's the dwarf like tower. More, yeah, there were like hordes of undead. Yes, yeah, so there, there weren't zombies. They were more, more like uh, some type of sentinel uh, remnants or something. Like okay, gotcha. Um, Tommy, so meta stuff. So it was the problem. That we were just like way out leveled, and like even if with all our combined power, we still got our ass kicked if we went there. Is that like a level 99 dwarf? It's the biggest dwarf fortress in all the land. No, it's more of a case of, um, to answer meta questions. Yeah, you know, we don't. There are a lot of high intelligence characters in the party. We'll be fine. Uh, a lot of the issue was that the party was split up. Granted, some of it was that people weren't present, but like. Smiles and Vin being away from everybody else when the encounter started. Uh, admittedly, they did roll really well for a lot of it. I'm sorry. Yeah, that was. I, I heard my doggo being concerned, and my immediate response was "Save doggo." That's a good response. Yeah, yeah I think also some of the problem was uh, that uh, they were like way more than us. I think with the party being reduced, they were like. Uh, more than twice as many enemies as we are, and they all had plus five to hit and dealt 1d8 damage, which is really deadly for a bunch of squishy uh, spellcasters well level two. So... <laughs> and they had a times three quit. Quite. Where right. was right. she at this? Uh, Tuxi did not go in the tower because she was spooked for the same reason that... Uh, uh, that words Wait, are but I was in the tower the session before and I poked the thing. Uh huh. And then you left because so you weren't. Pre and you left because you weren't present. Gotcha. I didn't want to botch you in the presence of twenty things. That makes sense. Gotcha. Trust me, it was so, in the it was in your boy, best interest. How concerned are you for your brother? Uh, I I think my brother can take care of himself, but then again, I saw the thing. Probably said the, that about the last one too. I'm just gonna slowly turn to face you, and just like reach over I'm and grab to my make club. Sure your brother doesn't die, okay? This is this is my concern. I want to make sure your brother stays alive. But and you, you say it in the most disrespectful, arrogant, asinine way possible. I'm going oh, to recover yeah. all the ways to kill someone with a club. Uh, one more time, Amy. Recounting the different ways to kill someone with a club. Uh, you... Both words for someone in throwing distance of a club. <laughs> <laughs> Remember, I upgraded to javelins recently. Well, I mean, if you don't I've... want us to come help you save your brother, that's on you. you that's the problem, though. My brother is a week ahead, and if I know his speed, he could already be all the way in rest off. We'd have to leave the stolen lands to find him. And with everything going on around here, I'm not certain that that's a good idea. Okay. Zombie tower it is, then. Hope your brother doesn't oh. die. Well, Tuxie. we're not going to the zombie tower. We wanted to visit uh, this good gentleman's uh, tree home. Well, I figured we would want to wait until we got better established before we properly introduced ourselves to any other like legitimate kingdoms or territories. Because right now, we're just a couple of travelers and a local boy. And we don't have, like, hey, this is our official new new city now. So I figured we should wait to be a city before we try to introduce ourselves to others. Why well, are we making a city? Was I drunk for this? We're building a city. What? We are? <laughs> what? <laughs> not not yet, no. So, so I actually was yet? thinking of, like... I saw it all in a vision. It's okay. Well, uh, for now, uh, what I was thinking of visiting them and asking them, like, what they know of the place around them, like, landmarks and stuff like that that we can visit, maybe talk with them about things that they saw recently, like, usually when uh, necromancers do stuff, it doesn't go unnoticed. Especially like killing unicorns? Yeah, for example. I mean, face and undead aren't, like, 
Thank you. best buddies. I, because usually Fae are quite connected to nature and other Also, the what in the life. right mind makes you think that you can just start a damn city out here? Because oh. I believe in myself, and it's going to be the greatest city because I saw it in, in a vision. I drank elven breast milk, and it was laced with something, and Calistria <laughs> herself spoke to me and said, great things are going to come for you, oh, you pretty, pretty sexy boy, and I'm going to fall. Mr. Mayor, I'm afraid re our resident pretty boy ha is under the weather or under the effects of some ill medicine. No, that makes total sense to me. Once upon a time, I had the elven breast milk as well. Calistria came to me and Calistria said, well, and I quote, and he Ferris puffs his little chest out. I don't remember, but it was something and it was good. And what is this talk about necromancy again? You say a dead unicorn. Oh, yes. Um, We happened to come across a dead unicorn in the wood. It looked like it was a necromantic spell that had blasted it. I could have sworn they mentioned it to you. My apologies. Perhaps I don't quite remember. I don't certainly remember anything about a, a dead unicorn and, and Miss Dragon Princess. I believe this is the first time we've even spoken. Oh. I and like that title. He <laughs> flaps down uh, for, for Emmy's sake. The, the creature is a gathlin. It stands about three and a half feet tall or so uh wings that kind of look like they're made out of like vines and skin that's kind of like marky ish carrying a pair of kukris well certainly if we go inform the king that they're killing critters out in the woods and there's necromancers running afoul perhaps our good king would be willing to help you Alternatively, if you'd like to go visit the remains of the trading post, we could certainly... It's not super far, is what I'm saying. I think we should focus on speaking to your... Um, uh, we should speak to your king first and assure the fact that no more damage can be caused. Caught, or, apparently I have drank too much of something nice as well. No, it's fine. I'm sure you're just worried about your girlfriend that's out lost in the woods somewhere. It's reasonable. I hate Some wings you. flutter from Tuxie's shadow, and then furl back up. Wings? Wait, what? What in the hell was that? What was what? Your, your wings flapping in the shadow, then furling back up. He quotes. Wait, Tuxie oh. has waves. Or, uh, oh my he... freaking! Yeah. <laughs> so he has waves? No, I I don't have wings. It's just. Somebody called the bombulence and having I'm... strong. No, 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 no. I'm. You I'm see, I'm an Azamar, sure and some Azamars, their shadows sort of dance. Mine happens to have wings, dragon wings, to be specific. Now that is the most. Can you do it again? Can you do it again, please? One more time. Do it. And uh... it. I. I don't. Do it on demand. It just sort of happens when I'm in a good mood. Do you do it if I say please? He just kind of stares really And show her back. with some more compliments. <laughs> Maybe that works. She said it works, it happens when she's in a good mood. When she's in a good mood? What puts you in a good mood? Ah, uh, ah, uh, begins looking around. The dwarf is drunk. Look at him, laugh at him. Ha <laughs> ha. I saw a laugh. <laughs> Is he actually drunk? I'm just saying words. Fair <laughs> enough. Ah. Tuxie. <laughs> Tuxie starts cracking up and sort of falls over laughing. And as she does so, the wings on her shadow sort of dance around. <laughs> For the yeah. record, my master would never get lost in these woods or whatever. <sighs> well, then how did you find a place to do it if you didn't get lost in the woods, local boy? Ferris just stares very intently, moves over to Smiles, starts scritching Smiles behind the ear all the whole time, just never breaking eye contact. I hate you. I hate all of you. Why? What have I done? I should never have accepted this favor from my sister. This is what I get for working with her. Does oh that, my god. Haven't you forgotten that we're engaged? And if it, oh, you're engaged? What? 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 What do you say? And, and if you're in a bad mood, does that mean your shadow will sprout like demon wings or some madness? 
I are not engaged, Tuxi. I have no idea what you are talking about. And oh, for... he's just embarrassed. Must he? Oh, I'd be embarrassed too if I had to compare myself to the the beauty of the noble, brave, stout dragon princess. And you, a local boy, I think they wrote tales about this down somewhere in the first world. Certainly, I'd sell it. I'd buy it. I'd do everything with this story. Copyrighted. I hate everything about this day, and I hate everything about what I am hearing. By the old gods and the new, can we get off this damned conversation and get to finding your king? Alrighty, I have a way to get this conversation changed. Of course, the Oopsie. official diffuser of my kingdom. Yes. I don't know if you remember this, but we found a statue of my god who had a bad, who had like a badger head or some sort of, like a, a head of an animal on it. Yeah, it's and, a badger head. It was a badger. And, uh, and I prayed that to it, which normally my god doesn't have a badger head. But anyway, Torag blessed all our weapons and they glow blue. Does yours glow blue? Um... Toxic? That is a wonderful question. Tuxie will well, it draw it out and look at it. And it's a very, very, like, sting blue. Ooh, it sparkles. Oh, it sparkles! It's like me. The dragon blade for the dragon princess. How wonderful. How beautiful. Oh, my God. Blessed by the dwarven gods. Blessed by, by the, the dwarven, dwarven god. gods. Did they bless the marriage? Is that why the human's mad? Did he not get his human gods? Oh, he didn't get his I human hate. gods. You all, I'm not married to her. Now, would you please stop this conversation? I do not appreciate these jokes. Am I oh, I, oh, I know you've not been married. We've not had the ceremony. Oh, you're engaged then. That's that's reasonable. That's for, and as the, like... Mr. Mayor, please she is not... leave the local boy alone. You're going to make him blush, and he'll want to leave, and I'll have no one to get stabbed instead of me. Last time local boy wasn't around... I got stabbed in my fucking favorite kidney. So let the boy be. I need him to be stabbed. And also, he's much too young to be married. Ro turns the corner. Wait, what? Yeah. No, wait. What did you say? I said, and also, he's too young to be you married. And Ro turns the corner. Who is Ro? <laughs> oh, wait. That's Who is this Ro? person? Wait. Wait. Is this is a teacher? No, it's not teacher. Oh god, I could have just this is where we're gonna introduce her. Now his brother. With the Ro, javelins yeah, and the javelins. I'm like, wait. Ro? Wait. Is that joke how I summon you? <laughs> wait, no, wait. Monroe wait, Monroe shows up? Uh-huh. Okay. Monroe I took it. I wait, but why is it wait, I'm gonna turn around and be like Mon Monroe, what the hell are you doing here? It's not hard to track you people. You're also very it's hard loud. to track you either. I thought you were heading to rest off. We found your tracks a while back. And I already doubled back. Been and gone. And also, what is your deals with me being near? Uh, whatever. God's above. <clears throat> More important things. Hate. Have you been to all legs? I have. Got lots of news. First things first. Your letter's Did on you its way. Did you kill him? What? No, I didn't kill him. The place is abandoned. Okay. When I came back, uh, all right, let me should should start at the beginning. Excuse me. Got there. Oleg and his wife were gone. Took anything that wasn't nailed down to value and took off. That makes sense. Mechanically, anything the party left behind in Oleg's is now lost. Is oh no, the horses or the wagons. Uh. Yeah, I'm gonna look no, over no, slowly. No, I think we only lost the uh, the carriage. We took uh, the wagon and the horse you, with us. Did you take that carriage somehow? Did I? Yes. No, I assume Oleg did. And Oleg probably fled the region. Does he have the collapsible folding bathtub then? No. We took all of that with me. Okay, the only good. thing that uh, that we lost is the carriage, which is annoying because that's my uh, comfortable way to get around. Likes to travel light. I suppose Apparently. now it's the down payment on Oleg's new trading post. 
Anyway, got to rest off, found he waves like broadly towards like Trazen, Elric, uh Tuxi, Devin, found your lot. Letters should get where it needs to go soon. Real problem. When I came back, looks like our favorite he uh holds up his hand and he taps his like opposite shoulder with it. Band of the brilliant red hand. Has apparently okay. taken up residence in the fort. Wait, in which fort? <sighs> oh, sorry. Fort? Maybe I should have said trading post. It's basically a fort now. Oh, for the love of the gods. Can this day get any better? Please yes, don't tell me that. Finally that finally is true. I'm a son of a bitch who stabbed me in my kidney. We cannot just go and kill uh, them. We do not have any legal justificational means. I'm in our fort. fucking kidding me. What more legal means do I need? That's why we find him and threw him out of the town. Now I want to throw him off of the mortal coil. Oh, gods. Fort's technically in Breville, so you could, in theory, be tried for murder, but don't think anybody will notice or miss him. Uh, please like, don't tell me that they were paraded by those... a group of wild eagles. You can't put eagles in jail. Oh my gods. Do you just, oh want my to... God. Do you just want to hide behind some rocks and keep summoning eagles until they're dead? Yes. <laughs> and and local boy can go there too. Uh... <laughs> you disrespected your town. They disrespected your town, local boy. Are you going to let them get away with that? I don't well, care. Words can only stink as much as I give them power to. Why are you so damned concerned with everything they... Oh, well, let me repeat. Your favorite kidney. Oh, I'm your sorry. Apologies. You weren't stabbing your favorite kidney. What? Because I do not have a favorite kidney, you oaf. Oh! Them's fighting words, local boy! Who the hell is this? Oh, you look like a, oh, you got a oh, who's a good kitty? And uh, Ferris goes and flies over to Dagger, who like starts to like act like he's gonna like jump up and pounce, and then rolls over and gets the the scratches on the tum tum and starts like kicking at Ferris. You know how it is. He is the mayor of New Timberfall. I just look over to Monroe. What'd you just say to me? He founded a town that he named. New Timberfall. Someone cut the dwarf off. Brother, what was it? Er, that's, uh, I don't even know. <laughs> Can we... oh, my that's the old and the new. <laughs> oh, I was simply going... Uh, forget it. As you were saying, Dwarf. Ah, uh, he knocked down a, a small tree and said he christened this area New Timberfall. And then the as he as this as Ferris calls him Pretty Boy over here, named him the mayor of New Timberfall. And then the new mayor named me the official diffuser, and that's how it all went down. Yeah, I have a princess. Typical face shenanigans. <laughs> First thing anyone's ever said that's made sense today. And... Also, by the way, Monroe doesn't even know that I'm a Finn has a girlfriend. This will be the first time he's heard of Finn even having a romantic relationship. Oh, good. Just to point that out, just to make it even better for me right now. <laughs> just yeah. everyone crap on the druid. That's today's session. <laughs> oh, and Ross no. knows how hard it is for me to get. They're like, oh, that's the title of the session, and we'd call it something else. I'm going to really quickly get in the habit of writing that shit down. Uh, Everyone crap. This is what I get. So, wait, so this is how the drawback family ties comes into play. It's no, like, actual, like, mechanical. No, it's just RP hell. Just RP hell. The best hell. Oh, oh God. Fucking Maybe, uh, Make fortune safe to not die from embarrassment. <laughs> oh no, I've already failed that. It's a whole mood. Monroe, I do have a question for you since you are the older brother. Go for it. Alright. Have you ever seen a statue of the god Torag, but with 
a um badger head instead of a dwarven head on it. I found a statue, and there's been in in any dwarven city, any dwarven temple, there's been none of them made that way. It's pretty old, and I was wondering if you've ever seen any that looked like that. Tuxi draws a rapier and points at it. Goes. Apparently, it made our weapons shiny, like extra shiny. Well, Which, I think that has had less to do with uh, the statue itself and more of, uh, yeah, like we cleared up the statue and then uh, a cleric of Torak prayed to it. Yeah, I know. Well, I mean is. that too. And he only blesses weapons when he only gives things for, away for free whenever hard times are upon someone. Makes sense. Yeah. And Ro points in, like, the general direction of where the statue would be a couple days that way. Is that the only one like that? As far as I know. Thank you. There's those old well, ruins. Yeah, I mean, that's, that's one above ground. Who knows what's underground, right? Never been underground. Don't that's really like really going where I can't see the stars, you know? Well, I'd imagine there are lots of badgers based on the statue. Hmm. <laughs> Makes sense. He nods. Uh, one of the things that I was wondering, you don't happen to know if they managed to fix like all those uh, kind of siege weapons that they had on their walls, because if they fix those, you're going to have a bad time when you go there. I doubt it. Certainly those things are falling apart. Yeah. Doubt they have the money, let alone the know-how. Good, good, because if we tried getting close, uh, anywhere near there, they would wreck us with that kind of weaponry. Probably something they're thinking about. First, they need money. First, they need someone who can do it. Be a couple weeks anyway, assuming they can find someone in Restov. Yeah, probably if we leave them enough time, they're going to turn that into an actual fort. Not a makeshift one. Pretty fortified now. Only one way in or out. Buildings are all still intact. Yeah, and they used to... So uh, why don't we were, just burn them? There were wooden palisades around it from the very beginning. That makes sense. Wait, um, uh, Robo Boy is older and scary and gruffer and charming brother. Uh, you said there's one way in and out, so we can just set the whole thing on fire and then wait for them to come out the one... <laughs> I like this one. Certainly could, yeah. Oh, that's what I call a roast. Any other suggestions of, of fast mo Well, smoking people out does work best. But and then when they get out, I can roast them proper. Certainly, you get revenge from what happened. Do you really want to mess with them currently? Certainly, you get revenge for Timberfall. That's true. Bro, just kind of like looks over the party. Ferris has gone to just smiles and dagger are like playing. Not with each other, but like adjacent to each other. And Ferris the whole time is just cackling and cavorting and singing and dancing and scritching and scratching. Uh, by the way, while you were uh, trekking through the woods and stuff, did you spot any more signs of the necromancers messing around here? Any more of those wandering... Uh, zombie kind of deals like where we found dead dwarfs and they turned out to be animated corpses didn't perhaps the occasional track that looked a little strange but was in a hurry didn't stop to investigate figure All the right. carrier needers well, would take care of it yeah well, that's probably also one of the reasons why we should take care of the Red Hand. They're still killing those uh, corpse eaters. 
and they probably will if they get paid well for it and are in need for the money. Um, that's not something that we want to see. Makes sense. They're one of our few nature's allies right now. Certainly they enjoy eating the things that are wandering around. Row kind of like takes in all of you. By the way, anybody notice that new star? Y'all seem the type. Yes. Yeah. What? We saw it after exiting the Dwarven Tower. After it almost got held into another into another plane of existence. Yeah. But then, but... then this pretty boy here decided to name it after himself. Hmm. <laughs> You didn't name it after me. No, Penny, the next one is yours. I have to go first, you know. She sticks her tongue out at you. I love how we glanced over the whole part with, like, the otherworldly being powerful enough to uh, rip part of the land. Uh, yeah, Ro kind of, like, stops dead. Like, just throw it out of space. What are you talking about? Ripped out of what? Well, um, do you know the old Dwarven Tower down by the river? thought it was the Herbarian, but yeah. Uh, well, we went there. For one, there were a lot of, like, Revenant-type undeads, which almost got us killed. And some, some kind of very powerful being grabbed the whole place, like, and pretty much, like, started tearing it out of this dimension and apparently it was trying to like throw us throw us out of this current dimension like into well pretty much what's out of space i uh, thought it was the astral uh, sea yes or the dark exactly. tapestry yeah whatever you want to call it um and it almost succeeded but thankfully, in the end, it didn't. So it fell back down, and we managed to escape. And um, because of that whole ripping and letting it fall back down, the undead lost the connection, and we got away without having to fight them to the death. Oh, and inside, <laughs> so did I see this from outside? You saw me nearly dead. Like I was one HP away from insta death. And I mean, like I was outside the building, so like. Yeah, you were the one that healed me up from that. And Vin still has a pretty bad scar from where a spear threw and threw him. Anyway, I'll talk to my wife. She understands more of what you just said. Uh, yeah, uh, uh, well, let me tell you how powerful this being has to be. Uh, Alex starts like scratching equations into the ground. Don't do that. Goes it's off gonna, on like some gonna... super annoying rant about like how much force is needed and magical powers, and like no one is listening to him. At least it grows in it anyway. That's not gonna. Uh, okay. Yes, yes, yes. The 99th level spell. We all get it. <laughs> no, oh, really I don't know. If it... I don't get it either. What the hell is he going on about? I understand that one and one makes three, but I don't understand any of that. I'm going to go back to playing with the dog, and Ferris goes back to just scratching smiles. He was just eating so, it up. So, um, Devin goes to Ro, and he's like, um, so question, if, if you're not too busy, um, because you're very capable and you have a very scary cat, wonder well, if you wanted to come with us, we're going to go burn down that building and kill a bunch of the scarlet red-handed folks. Uh, care to tag along? You want me to go now? We go in. What are you talking about? We've got to go see the king! Goes back to scratching. Oh. I'd, certainly it's oh, past my bedtime. It's been past my bedtime for a few days now. I better go check in and let him know I haven't been eaten by wolves. No, not not you. Smiles kind of like, at that. Not you. Not you, Smiles. You're a good boy. You don't okay. eat the gas. Why is familiar? What? Why is his voice familiar? Why is his voice? Because I kind of have one. That's the only voice I got for this kind of thing. You've probably heard me do Maybe. it for another NPC in is the past. This you were RPing pain. When you were botting uh, Kane's character in When he was playing Calibre. Francis Rooted, he was playing a, a very, very Gaelic druid. Yes, I'm using the same damn voice, because it's the only one I got. 
We all know in Scotland they all sound exactly the same. Hi, everyone watching in Scotland. I'm not that rude. <laughs> Oops. Look, you just gotta make your Jack septic eye voice. He's getting older and he forgets his name every few thousand years. Suddenly you see a gourd leshy that looks way too much like a pumpkin head from Ogre Battle turn the corner. <laughs> Oleg! Oh god, his name's Oleg. It's gone full circle. <laughs> good, good. This pleases me. Monroe, I don't know if this would help, but tell your wife that there was a dwarven stat a, a statue of one of the dwarven gods in there, but it was of Torag's enemy, the opposite of him. What? Were, I forget his name, Tommy. Uh, his name uh, is Grogo? Joskar. Drosgar, yeah, of Drosgar there, which he is everything. Imagine work you to the bone, and one of those people that would steal your work that you worked on and claim it as his own. Wait, um, Mr. Mayor, I. If we were to go to meet the king, um, do you think you would possibly, uh, as on good faith? Uh, as emissaries of us as citizens of New Timberfall if he would give us anything uh, that would be helpful for the killing of a group of people with red hands. It's entirely possible. Okay, team. So I was trying to figure out if we want to if we go and see the king, then the red hand is going to have more time to fortify their actual thing and turn it into a fortress. But if the king is going to give us shit to help us kill him, then I guess that makes sense. But if we want to kill them now while they're not as fortified, we can go back and talk to the team later. Uh, what are your What are the numbers, I ask, um, Monroe? How many do you think's in the fortune? Fortunately, I don't think they've had time to go recruiting. Shouldn't be any more than last time. What number was that? I forget. Was it like six? I think Nine it was... in total. Uh... Including yeah, a wolf. Uh, I would have uh, said eight, so I was pretty close. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so nine people. You remember, Tremon himself was pretty loud and boisterous and obviously like the all eyes on me type, but there was a hobgoblin that seemed to be scouting for him with a wolf. There was a really big, burly half, or no, he wasn't half, he was a full orc. That we didn't, didn't get to see anything really come from because he got color sprayed into the ground really fast. <laughs> the rest was uh, one, two, five humans and a halfling. Yeah, there was, there was some, so, and I'm pretty sure the halfling rogue. was a rogue type person. Yeah, yeah. you expect so a lot to get of supplies. They have to send someone out. Right. Which means if we wait, we might be able to catch them when their numbers are a little bit lower. Mm, yeah, I take just as the justification we have for engaging in combat with these people. Because once again, yeah, they insulted us, and it's kidding. not exactly a good reasoning. How about Nor starting is they stab the you. actual reasoning is they are out hunting the things that eat the, the corpse hunters, or corpse yeah. munchers. So they're out killing corpse munchers, and we don't want them to kill corpse munchers because we need them to munch the corpse before they turn into zombies. So the corpse muncher's design as a part of nature is to munch corpses. They are fucking up the circle of life. Mufasa is displeased, and you should... Okay, Tommy, oh. I'm fairly certain that does not track at all. No, it kind of does. Like, the... Overhunting? Carry like... needers, like... If the zombie problem were to stop, certainly, like, they'll eat anything that moves. So they would then turn on, like, livestock and local herbivore populations and things. But that doesn't mean that they aren't also, like, it'd be like killing vultures. Well, their food source were also to decrease enough. I imagine they start killing themselves. True. They don't sound like the type of animals that are smart enough to deny themselves cannibalistic instincts. Mm-hmm. Makes sense. After all, rodents are very happy to kill and eat one another. Indeed. Yeah. But either also, way, you you was... say that, and I go to open my mouth as if to disagree, and then by the gods, you might have a point. Yeah. There's also that's the second point. That's a little curtsy. You're welcome. They have been. Oh, At least the point isn't in his favorite kidney this time. Yeah. 
Yeah, they amazing. also have been antagonizing us like right from the start, pretty much without. You us. all have been antagonizing me since the start of me knowing you. Hey, hey, hey. Watch no it. one would blame Watch you. Watch the boy. Hey, at least uh, I got you to stop moping for a little bit about your brother. I go up to the druid, and I say, "We are a traveling band of merchants." And we are allies in arms nope. in combat. And I see and I see this as good old family jabs. You have your actual family, but then you have your traveling family. And that's what I hope you would see me as as I'm starting to see you all as. Wasn't it Aww. entertainers that had merchants? Ah, uh, God's above. I mean the Verizians, they see their whole caravan is family, I suppose. Anyway. Uh, but yeah, um, do you still remember when we did our whole show and stuff like that? I they just kind of like already... look over to Monroe for like a please give me something to get out of this sort of book. He kind of just sits back and watches. Damn it! Brother, why are you never there for me? Um, Before I give my two cents in on this, guys, I... <laughs> Don't remember these people too much. So, what ha where was I? What happened? Well, you were drunk and you were shooting stuff. Well, so the shooting, Euro... quote unquote. Yeah, I mean, you were pointing the gun in the general direction and pulling the trigger. I understand. I failed you. I will not fail you again when we encounter these individuals. I shall make sure they get swift justice equal to what they have done to you. My favorite kidney, thanks you. We saw stab one in the Enough with the kidney. damned kidney! I will hold one down for you can stab them in their kidney. Okay, does that not go against the teachings of Torag? That must go against the teachings no, of Torag. An somewhere. eye for an eye. I'm not oh, saying kill, I'm saying stab I'm saying stab him in his kidney. That one was like the kidney. result in his death. Oh by the it will? Oh. I don't know how med I don't know how bodies I thought it had to be in the heart or I'd get stabbed a hundred bunks of times. Oh by the lord the Ugh. I'll take it back then if that will kill him. I you think know, it would just this be is why I kidney. have to constantly ask myself, where the hell did my sense of empathy and all this come from? Because it certainly as hell didn't come from you, I point over to Monroe. Nor father, nor anyone in that regard. I think your brother is more of a tough love type. He just continues watching. You, know you just say. enjoy oh, watching my suffering. Think of the corpse muncher. I am honestly with the noble here. On um, we should talk to the king first, get his assistance, because it will our power be more justified in this region with what actions we need to do to help stop this undead incursion with a fake king backing our decisions. That's a good point. He might knight us. That is a that is a solid point. Just hey, to make clear, sparkles. Tommy. By the I've way, already gotten promoted oh. to Dragon Princess, so I'm a just, noble now. Just to make clear, Tommy, by the way, like, these corpse eaters, they aren't pest species. They're not like, say, for example, um, how deer are in the United States, where it's actually a good thing to go out of your way to kill a lot of them, because there's just so many of them, and they're ruining the ecosystem because of that. Um, they certainly could be, but they aren't presently. More, more like hyenas. Okay, I'm just so making sure that we, I, I'm just making sure that we're not like gonna. Or well, Ross, you're from the country area. I imagine the Carolinas get a lot of coyote traffic. Yeah, we do. But well, I do too. More, a little more like yeah. that. You're not necessarily concerned for all of your cats and dogs you're letting run around quite yet, but like could be an issue. But certainly, like they are cleaning up the land. Zombies are more of an issue, I believe. Yeah, like I said, currently they're basically our nature's allies. 
because they okay. eat corpses and uh, we don't want undead running around these places. Uh, At least I think we do. You can disagree with me if you No, do I'm like... not going to disagree with you, damn. Uh, I just do not like the idea of wantonly picking a fight, but if this is a well, fight we must pick... Oh, okay, have you not realized by now that most of the way you try to argue has done nothing but hurt your standing with me? Perhaps you should allow the others to try and convince me. I thought we were already convinced the whole circle of life thing. I thought we did that. You're good. Uh, you don't just want just because I dislike them destroying the circle of life does not mean I want to end their circle of life. We should no, take a vote and let majority rule. Oh, we I already mean, know where the I already know where the majority is going to go. Technically, it wouldn't end the circle of life because a the bodies would return to the ground. I know the <laughs> exact. I'm being oh for the love of God! It's fine. Let's go and get the damn fake king's help. And then can we just? Oh, it's not my. Oh my god! And I'm just gonna start walking in the direction, of, like walking in one direction before pausing, turning like, which way is the damned way again? How are we ready to go? Are we finally ready yes! to go? On? Good. Yes. Splendid. Get me the hell out of here. Oh, good. I'll introduce you to the king, and you can tell the king all about your girlfriend. And Rose eyebrows kind of go up <laughs> real high at this. Um, um, I'm gonna head home. I'll catch up. Oh no, by the gods! <laughs> and so it was. This is just hell for Vin. This whole trip, this whole adventure has been nothing but hell. Oh um, man. I love it. I mean, I love it out of character, but in character, god, I hate it. <laughs> you know, like, I'm sitting here with a big. I'm, I'm, I'm sitting here with a big crap eating grin, you know? Like, I'm enjoying myself, but like. Dang. How far is what, Jeff? <laughs> How far away are we from the kingdom? Mmm, couple days. A little less. Okay, so we have time to, like, roleplay and talk as we go along. Yeah, yeah, indeed. So, Tuxie's gonna try and find some berries or some sort of something tasty, a snack along the way, but she's not gonna eat it. Okay, roll survival. So indeed, Tuxie finds uh, with that roll, it's probably good that you don't eat them. <laughs> about the size of oh god, I uh, I recently discovered via a friend of mine, and I didn't realize how many stickers and patches Kraken dice would send me. I've I've bought a lot of dice. I've the goblins are pleased, but probably about the size of this dice bag that I'm holding up. About yeah, uh, four inches. We don't have a tall. webcam. Shh. Watch the video on YouTube about like four inches tall, about like inch. Yeah, just watch live. it days later to get this. Yeah, okay. It'll be live at some point. Leave me be. Uh, the little tiny mushroom that's kind of like a purpley, yellowy color. Think like think a uh, like fly amanita, but instead of red and white, it's purple and yellow. And if that isn't psychedelic enough, I don't know what is. Well, Tuxie is going to take it and give it to Vin as a peace offering. I thought he was uh, going to give it to the Fae King, so I was going to say, I probably like that it is, looks psychedelic. But you oh, you brought me drugs! That's wonderful! <laughs> All of you are I'm nice. I'm just and... going to look at it. Uh, what is it? What is it? So that particular kind of mushroom, they only grow, and y'all are moving pretty fast at this rate, they only grow in the presence of really, like, old old usually uh oak trees it's technically poisonous but not in the like throw your guts up and die kind of way in the you're gonna see sounds for a little while kind of way uh, it's a it's a look, mild hallucinogenic uh okay i'll take the mushroom look it up and down look her and say do you know what this is it's a mushroom. Is it something more? I don't know. You're the expert at this. It's a... Yes, it's a mushroom, but I'm a... Oh, I think the people around here like to call it the um, a Wisdom of the Old Oaks mushroom or something like that. Oh. So it's a fancy yeah. mushroom. Well, I did good. Oh, it's... um. 
It's fancy, all right. I ain't eating this. I ain't eating this at all. What? Uh, I went out of my way say, to find it for you. Let's just say that I'm going to be seeing that I'm going to be tasting colors after I eat this. I wonder what that's, that's like. Most fascinating. Here, you want to try it, Wizard Boy? You go ahead. And I'll toss him the hallucinogenic mushroom. <laughs> um, usually I like to uh, I'm keeping my head clear. You but I will that. study the uh, effects, certainly. I'm, okay. I'm an alchemist after all. Gonna <laughs> put that away in one of my bags. Let him just create nerve gas out of it. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. What if what if we give it to the Fae King as a gift? He might like you it. You want to give drugs to the Fae King. What are you talking what? about my king for? They want to give him drugs. Oh! Does your king like recreational drugs? Does my king like recreational drugs? The owlbear shit in the woods, nature boy! And then, kind of like as if on cue, as you guys have been walking, a like on the very edge of the forest, you can almost see out of it. An owlbear shitting? An owlbear taking a giant shit. <laughs> a, 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 you, Vin, know the tree. The tree's pretty old. A pretty old oak tree just kind of like rises up in its own independent little clearing and <coughs> Ferris yelling, everyone else talking, does alert. Uh, there's probably about half a dozen of them in total. They are of the same race as Ferris. These are armed with bows and they come flapping over with bows drawn. Does an owlbear shit on our tree? <laughs> yep, the owlbear is taking a crap on the druid too. Anyway, the Gaffin all come flying, like moving with their bows pointed. Ferris puts his hands up. Oh, we're in trouble! Oh, I forgot to tell you, I'm I'm kind of in trouble with with the king. What? I, it's uh, it's a long story. We should. I'm not the king. The mayor reports to the king. It's a simple hierarchy of a feudal society. And then, like on the other side, uh, one of the like what is probably the leader of this group just all right. All of you, disarm. Put your weapons on the ground. Ferris has already, like, pulled the kukris off his belt and set them down. Might I ask what we just stepped into here? You have stepped into the realm of King Flynn of... And the, like, the guards turn and point towards the oak. The Tree of Flynn. Last I checked, wasn't that just the big old oak tree? Now it's our big old oak tree. All of you lay down your arms. None of you will come to harm. But what? Ferris, not now. Do we have... So we have your word? They nod. Oh, what about my wolf here? He can't exactly take out his teeth. I put down my hammer. Yeah. Tuxi, uh... Unstrap his... Uh, that sound her rape here. Can I at least keep my shield? I don't think any of you are understanding. Uh, can I get a will save from everybody real quick? Uh. So as the will save goes down, Devin, you can tell, like, you guys aren't really in a whole lot of danger. This seems to be kind of staged. Nevertheless, as the like the head of the guards when we say disarm what we mean is and he takes his left arm to his right shoulder and pulls the arm from the socket then sets it down then looks at all of you that that's what we mean we mean we need you to disarm and tuxi and vin both can clearly see through the illusion but like all of the gathlin ferris is actually just completely like my roll 20 is not rolling for Good. some reason Good for you, buddy. You did it. Your roll 20's not rolling. I'm going to grab you real quick. Uh, Where are you? Oh, that's the NPCs. Duh. That's why I can't find you. Uh, I need to organize these. Does it still say I'm in it? You no. Know, it does not. Well, that might be why. That Hang might on. Be why. Uh, you rolled a 9. and As far as everyone who's not treason, 
Vin and Tuxi is concerned that Gathlin are pulling off their arms and setting them on the ground. Everyone else can see through the illusion. Well, what are you waiting for? I asked you a kind question, please. Disarm. We aren't about to try and do any illusion bullshittery right now. Aw, oh, damn. He saw through it. All right, all right. Call it off, call it off. We've got a smarty pants over here. And, like, all the... There's a kind of a shimmery heat mirage sort of effect. And clearly the arms, like, appear out of nowhere. You yeah, forgive us. It's kind of boring on guard duty here. And a couple of... They're dressed in a little less armor. Come flapping down out of the trees. A couple more Gathlin. Ferris has been <sighs> gone for quite a while. Well, You're you not in any danger. It. it was funny. It was funny. You're quite correct, Miss Dragon Princess. What brings you to the kingdom? We bring drugs. Oh! Splendid. Yes, I'll take you to see the king right away. <laughs> Everyone, they've got drugs. <laughs> oh, my the gods. And what the manner of the... drugs do you bring before my king? He's a uh, very discerning king, you understand. I show him the mushroom. And they fly forward and take a look. Looks it up and down. That's what the interlopers were carrying with them. Where did you find this? On a tree? On a tree? Oh, um, by the gods. I'll explain <laughs> where we found it as well as the fact that it grows on old oaks and whatnot. Hmm. You see, we're actually, we're holding a prisoner right now. He said he was looking for these to make some kind of, I, I, it's beyond me. They did some violence under the tree. We captured one of them, killed a couple others. It's a good thing you came to me first. Had I, well, you see, your charity and the weapon of the enemy are the thing the enemy's looking for. Certainly I might have got confused and caused you harm. Maybe asked you to disarm. There's a kind of like a chuckle runs through all of the uh, little Gathlin warriors. I could not look any less amused. What's your problem? Don't you I know a joke? A shitty, I have uh, had the shittiest day of my life in a long time. Why is that, so, friend? You know, it's, it's that it's time of he's the getting month. Married. For him. He's gotten married. Oh, fellas, he's gotten married. And all of them start like cheering. When's the when's the happy day? We're really just taking a giant crap on Vin this session. <laughs> Excuse me, I just need to find a rope and then I'll get to you on that one. What do you need a rope for? Is it is uh, it tradition amongst the humans of these lands you gotta have a uh, you no, jump just, rope? There, to tie in there is actually a tradition where you jump. Uh, I just feel like, feel, like, feel like hanging a swing up right now is all. I feel like hanging a swing. I. They all kind of, like, look around. This would be a fine place for a playground, I suppose. Anyway, if you've got word of this and Ferris has not killed you dead, certainly we could take you for a, a meeting with the king. Perhaps, maybe, possibly, you could be helpful for us. Certainly we could use some friends out here in these lands. We're pretty new here. Noticed. Oh, look who's getting short with us. Anyway, come, come, all of you, and they, they form it's not like, a, like you literally... Oh my the gods, I hate this. And they form like a V formation and fly in front of you and escort you guys to the center of this tree. Uh, let me get a perception check from everybody. I just want to go home. I just want to be somewhere I belong. Don't we all? That's not a perception Rock check. Rolling 46. <laughs> <laughs> Meanwhile, Ragnar is just going to channel energy. And 1d12. <laughs> <laughs> what the hell is happening? <laughs> Ragnar channels and fires his gun. Hey, on. I Say what? My laptop, I had a plug. Uh -huh. uh, Chewie's dead. Good, good to know. <laughs> I'm gonna open up Chewie's sheet on my end so I can Chewie's laptop disarmed and now I will roll for Ragnar the Red who rolls a perception and got a 26 good lord dang <laughs> so Tuxi through all the like pomp and circumstance flying around you don't notice this but there are like 
a couple of cages hanging from the low branches of the tree. And it's really... Nah, Devin doesn't get it either. Devin's pomp and circumstance. But Vin, Ragnar, Elric, Trazen, definitely all of you see. In one of the cages swings a... They've got like a really like weird tuft of pale white hair, kind of like bluish, purplish kind of skin. The sun in the clearing is particularly bright and they seem to like try to hide their eyes from it with hands that only have four fingers. Very clearly the creature is called a Darrow. They are, oh, whoops, did a scroll the wrong direction. Darrow are, uh, they're known to dwell in the dark lands. They're descended from mysterious fae, uh, lust. I remember them. They talk weird. They lust for the comforts of the surface, yet, like, the sun causes them to blister, burn, Come and back die. And no. Yes. Swinging, like, in cages. There's also, uh, everybody who rolled, like, above a 15. The branches of the tree and, like, the roots of the tree are very... Like, the roots are probably if, like, all the humans laid side by side, they would be, like, the roots are almost as wide as you. And there are some, like, openings in the ground where the roots have, like, tore open holes. Okay. Um, I don't know how it was for the others, but and after you said hanging in the tree, there was, like, a really long break where whatever you said didn't come through for me. Oh, poop. Darrow. I heard it was the fey things. Uh, creatures are called Darrow. Yeah. They talk. And I'm back in roll 20. I can roll again. Mm. Nice. As you're led to, like, there's no real structures or anything around the tree, but there are some... Mm, it's pretty clear to the casters that parts of the tree have been, like, magically altered to form little shelters. And flying down from one of them is probably about six inches taller than the rest of the Gathlin, dressed Wait, in Tommy, like. Tommy, before we meet. The... Yes. Do we before we meet the king? Do we have a chance to practice a little something? Does anybody have minor illusion? When we walk through, <laughs> I want to have like a bunch of doves summoned, so like the doors will open, the doves will fly through, and princes when doves cry will be playing as we are introduced. <laughs> Uh, I can do the sound part of that. I have ghost sound. Okay, I can do the doves. If you can do the sound, we'll make that happen. Okay. And there's not really a room so much as, like, you approach the tree and the king comes flapping down and then doves are summoned and illusions are illusioned. And... By every god of this plane, that is the most impressive thing I have ever seen in all of my life. Wow. It is all for your joy and entertainment, your highness. That's what me. is impressive? What is impressive? He summoned doves and he and uh the king holds out a hand and starts concentrating. I I think probably something along the lines of ghost sound. It's not as fancy of an illusion spell, but it's I mean it'll get the job done. Certainly, right. it's the more impressive than any of the other humans I've seen in this part of the world. I'm just pulling out my smoking pipe and lighting it. Well, I could make him sparkle. You could make him oh, sparkle. Yeah, totally do that. Huh? You can make him sparkle. Spark. Yeah, I mean, he'll be blind for a little bit, but yes. Why would you, who are you blind to? That's, uh, you say he'll be blind for a little bit, and a lot of the Gaffling go to weapons, and they look a little more serious this time. Assaulting the king in his own home. No, no, not him, the human. Oh, which one? No, me, oh, okay. me, me, the sparkly me. one. Oh, you're gonna blind him, have we? Have you brought blood sport into my kingdom? Cause I'm not technically a no, we drugs. <laughs> oh, you brought drugs. That's the next step up from blood sport. We're basically the Roman empire at this point. <laughs> uh, by the uh, gods. But in oh, all seriousness, I think there's been enough joke and there's like some like laughter from the back of the crowd that's assembled. There's probably like, Oh, a couple dozen Gathlin in total. And quiet you. I'm serious. We're done with jokes. 
There's a big pregnant pause. You can almost hear the crickets. What can I do for you? Well, there are a few things. For one, um, we don't know. Have you heard uh, from the activity of the undead and necromancers in these woods? Hunted? Just recently, a couple days ago, we came across the corpse of a unicorn, which was slain by a very powerful innovation spell. There's kind of a gasp amongst the assembled crowd as you say this. Haven't run into no undead, no. Haven't seen a whole lot of necromancers, just voles. And he, he points in the general direction of the cage from which there is a little, like, a little rope tassel hangs from the bottom and he points at it and concentrates. And there's a spellcraft check. Like, if you would like to roll it to identify the spell, yeah. basically. Uh, I mean, <laughs> that might have been unclear. Pages. Gotcha. <laughs> How do I not have any ranks in spellcraft? Elric's got it. Very clearly, he's casting Mage Hand. Uh, uh, Devin has it, too. And he pulls on the rope enough so that the cage swings a little. And the like the light that is intermittently coming through the like leaves and things changes. And the Darrow is not blocking the light there. And this, the sound of bacon on the skillet. They... Ah. I'll take out my pipe out of my mouth and say, please do not do that again. Or what? Do you have a habit of coming in other people's homes and telling them what they should or shouldn't do with their prisoners who have taken you, my you own as prisoners. prisoners? Your Highness, do not mind him. He is but a poor local boy who does not understand your advanced customs. I apologize on his... Do not apologize for me nor put any words in my mouth. I apologize for him asking me not to apologize, Your Highness. <laughs> He has been a bit cranky uh, in the last couple of days. I may um, have poked a little too much fun at him. He's in a bad mood. That's reasonable. Yes, yeah, so why don't you ask your little friend over there, I'll say looking over to the mayor, how great of a time I've been having with your people so far. Ferris just kind of smiles sheepishly. Bleh, smiles sheepishly. Those words are hard. There's just a long drag on the on the smoking pipe as I just push out a puff of smoke at him. We heard something about uh, interlopers who came in here. Uh, we, I, I was only half joking when I said we brought drugs, but we came across a mushroom in the woods that apparently the interlopers were also carrying. Nay, they've been carrying some form of... Oh, what did something about the all the colors of the wind? There was there was a an elven woman come through not too long ago. There was she, an elven woman. What was her name? Didn't ask. Damn it. She seemed to be about and uh, the king describes Versenta. Versenta. Okay. Like not as or that was that was the name of. Uh, Teacher later, right? There's a lot of names. No, her. no, that's that's I lively. For Cynthia is the half elf sister. Oh, She's oh. the love child of of Jackal. Oh, I almost screwed that up. It, Indeed, he, I, I'm he describes to... he describes the one that your your teacher slash love interest. I'm just gonna kind of like very clearly close my eyes and just take a long drag on the pipe. I'll take it. You know her then. Uh, yes, she's um, an old friend of mine. Your Highness, I think that might be his his uh, future bride. For the love of the gods, all in you, I will throw you between this plane and the next if you do not stop pestering me with that. All right, we'll take it. It's serious. Fair enough. In any case, she said the mushrooms were a, a mild, almost illusory in nature, hallucinogen. But if you, you brood them the right way, you could form a, a sort of... A sort of uh, he snaps his fingers, and as he does so, there's kind of like flashes of color every time his fingers snap. Uh, you could protect yourself from the sun. I have to assume that's what our friend here was looking for. Yeah, but they didn't exactly Ivory ask Jamal. nicely. And leave some of my people are dead. That's concerning. And leave it to Lively to know how to use drugs for some reason or another. <laughs> so, 
So what was the name of these creatures again? Daro, I believe. That's Darrow. what we used to call them. Daro, Daro. As the conversation like kind of like slows to a crawl, the Daro. Does anyone speak under common? I do. Yes. Oh, fair enough. So a couple of you, uh, the Darrow, as the cage swings in under common, just please, please, let me out. This is the worst thing. And like swings and swings. There's again the sound of the bacon on the fryer. Some of my people are also missing because of this miscreant. I don't know how deep the tunnels neath my tree go, but they certainly go deep enough if those are coming out. Pardon of me. Hey? Uh, do any of your people know Undercommon? Uh, bits and pieces here and there. So, do you think it might be possible to negotiate with your prisoners? Tried that. Didn't want to negotiate. Showed up with arms. Hmm. Well, I think after a few days uh, out in the sun, like they are now, um, perhaps their inclinations may have changed. They're in a bit less of a position to fight and more in a position where I think bargaining is their only option. Given that that thing smells like breakfast already. That said, I don't know how many of them are neath my tree. Well, perhaps more than a we few. could find out. And perhaps we could figure out where your missing men are as well. You'd be willing to do this for me. Why not? Because it puts we you in would, harm's you way. Um... The tunnels beneath my home are... Well, I mean, I imagine you, kind, copper-scaled one, would be fine. Because the gaffer are about as big as a kobold. The rest of you are crawling at best. I am a dwarf. I can... I can live underground. Die. Don't know if you can fight underground if the ceiling's only three feet tall. You're saying, pretty boy. Yes, we, we, we would be happy to help you with this, but just understand that we would, would do this in an offering of, of friendship, doing a favor for you now, knowing that there may come a day when, um, let's say hypothetically, there were a band of hooligans who had stabbed someone, let's say hypothetically me and my favorite kidney, and we needed to kill them. Uh, we do the saber for you. You would help us in return for something like that, hypothetically, in the future, maybe, if we're friends? Yeah, put a diplomacy check on it. Even so, I would prefer help against the undead than help against some ragtag bandit group. Priorities. Certainly, Dating. even amongst the humans, we understand the, the need of an oath, the need to hold your word, and for as much fun as it, and he turns to Vin, as much fun as it would likely be to continue to poke fun at you. There's not a lot of humans that we've met in our time with a respect to nature as much as apparently you, as well as your elven friend. We would be more than happy to provide whatever aid we could, especially if there's necromancy afoot here. How it gets done. Thank you so much. And how it gets done is up to you. You can go down there and talk to him. You can go down there and kill them oh. all dead. I just like to be able to sleep at night. You understand? I will say... Talk um, to the one in the cage first. I have a question about our weapons. Did somebody can Ah, uh, Chew, you cut out at the end there, buddy. Um, I have a question about all weapons. Did somebody carry those in? I or assume you guys when they told us to put them down. Yeah, I assume you. Picked okay, your gotcha. Weapons. After the whole disarming joke, we all kept our weapons. Good. If you wish to speak to the prisoner, far be it for me to stop you. Also, I, I guess I didn't realize I was still muted. My apologies, but I did say. Thank you, and forgive my ill mood, and druidic to the fey creature. I don't know if he understands it. 
they uh yeah sure why not uh seems to understand and back just or at the very least still recognize the language i got this he understands it and nods doesn't say anything Would you be kind enough to lower the prisoner far enough that I could speak to her without shouting? Mm, diplomacy check. I'm not asking him to take her out of the cage, mind you. Well, shit, you should have. You probably should have. <laughs> I suppose we can do that. And anybody speak Sylvan? Under common in Spain, no. you know, Sylvan. Uh, the king turns towards the subject. Like, is nope. Sylvan the elf language, or what's the elf language? Elven. Okay, then what's Sylvan? The language of, like, fey. Fey language. Elven. Dryads. Uh, or Gaffer. Okay. I don't know, because, like, elves are always kind of fey. Okay. That's that's fair, yeah. Uh, says some stuff in Sylvan, a couple of and go flying up, and the cage is roughly lowered. That doesn't land quietly. Tuxi will approach and sort of plop herself down near the bars. And in under common, she will speak to the prisoner. All right, I've gotten you down, but I need some of your help as well. They just kind of glare back. You see, um, the king here is concerned that some of his people have gone missing, and he is, um, he believes that you are responsible. Now, I might be able to get you out, but I would have to know where his people are and how we might be able to help them. Mm, Perhaps we can come to a peaceful resolution. Roll diplomacy. The Darrow looks back, and it's it's Elric and uh, uh, Tuxi that speak under common, right? Take that as a yes. Uh, looks I mean, up. Tuxi. Looks up at Tuxi. Either give me mushroom or let me die. There. And he, like, brings up his hands to kind of, like, air quote, and as he does so, the wind, not so serendipitously for him, blows the, like, the trees around a little bit, and so a little bit more sunlight comes down and hits him in the, like, in the hand. And, ah, mm, mushroom or die. So, do we still have the mushroom? I see. Or have we handed it off? Okay. Uh, Tuxi will hand the mushroom through the bars. And they take it and greedily, like, throw it down and, like, start, like, nomming on it. A couple bites in, they start to slow down a little bit, and the sound of bacon goes away. Much better. The creature, I assume, has been taken down. We've never seen. And he kind of like gestures in the direction of the Gaflin. The Gaflin don't like it, but he continues doing so. Vars before. Curious to see what makes them. And he like spins his fingers as if to make like a wheel. Ah, how, how to, uh, what's inside of them? Oh, goody. They're yeah, scientists. Well, uh... Mad scientists. Well, I can understand the curiosity. Don't you think it's rather rude? I mean, would you like it if someone who had never seen you before did that to you? Uh, as soon as you say that, they their hair is kind of like tall grass shooting up out of the back of their head. They go to part it a little bit 
and there are some pretty obvious stitch marks all over the like cranium of this thing. They shrug. I guess it's, that's a price they're willing so, to pay for knowledge. Where underground was this creature taken? Shrugs again. Don't really remember. And they turn and they point in the direction of the, the king. Said something I didn't recognize and then I was... Mm, asleep against my wall and then I ended up um, here. And they go to like tap the bars. And was he taken by your people? I assume. Well, then for your sake, I hope that he's still uh, in one piece. I've given you temporary relief, but I will need to find him alive, and then maybe we can talk about having you released. They nod. Does that sound fair? They nod. Tuxie will turn to the king and um, basically relay the conversation and tell him that um, yes, their people did take them underground. They were curious about him and is possibly going to be dissected. So she is hoping to find him. All right. Certainly, if you can find my lost people, it would be helpful. Alternatively, you could just run these bastards out. I don't think they're necessarily malicious. I think they're more curious and they don't know where to stop. Um, what, what could El Elric know, like, what kind of materials are there about these kind of creatures? Are they known? What kind of check would I need to roll to see how much I could know about them? Uh, call it Dungeoneering. Dungeoneering, alright. So, Darrow... Elric's heard of him from his time in, like, Magnamar, and, like, any major city you've stopped at, there's rumors, like, when people go missing in the middle of the night, that Darrow came up from the Darklands to kidnap them, and indeed, the Darrow are, they're, like, they are naturally very, very stealthy, and truly, they are able to cast darkness at will. So the fact that this one isn't yeah. is either something to do with the cage preventing that from happening, or perhaps they've just gone a little crazy with pain. In fact, a Darrow can, at most, the longest reported time a Darrow ever like lasted in areas of like bright sunlight on the surface was about 18 hours or so. So honestly, this one's probably not thinking. It just hurts really bad. If left out in the sun, eventually it would... The bacon in the skillet analogy has worked pretty well so far, so I'm just going to run with it. Eventually it will burn and shrivel into nothing. But they're pretty good mm -hmm. at, like, sneaking around and stabbing people. Okay. Do you have any ideas of... Well, they seem to be somewhat mad. Uh, what what What's like their... Uh, well, we don't quite want, color, want to call it alignment. Like, what's the disposition usually? Uh, most accounts of Darrow 
that you've ever read or heard of, they're pretty widely considered to be insane, like on a species level. And given that they're from the Darklands, that tracks like if they were descended from Fae and then went to the Darklands and then popped back up, who knows what they saw or what they sought out or any combination of anything between here and there. Yeah, but combined with them being used as a scare and stories and being blamed for disappearance of people doesn't and their own well. like uh, experimentations on other species and truly themselves like when the darrow leaned down and like showed a bunch of uh like stitch marks on their head probably mm. means that some you assume another darrow has performed advanced experimentation shall we say on the darrow's head Maybe that's the reason why he's not as powerful as he should be. Maybe his brain got damaged. Perhaps. Maybe his casting ability was weakened, his spell-like ability. Because you said he should be able to cast darkness at will, but... Mm -hmm. He's probably just in a lot of pain. All right. Um, I'm willing to go down, but I'm going to need a... eh, Let's say a couple mushrooms and a torch. Can you not see in the dark, little dragon? Oh, it's not for me to be able to see. It's a contingency plan if negotiations don't go well, I suppose I could threaten to burn the mushrooms to escape. There's kind of a murmur amongst the Gaflin. Makes sense. What about the they rest want of them? I don't know if they could fit. Certainly, it would be uncomfortable. Hey, uh, how big is Smiles? Really to be uncomfortable. Smiles is, Smiles is a medium-sized creature. So would ah, he... so he couldn't fit. Mm-hmm. He could fit, no. and all the medium creatures can. It will just be like the ceilings are low. You're you're Skyrim crouching the whole way through. We'll have to quadruped crouch like doggy crawl, I guess. <laughs> yeah. So, if well, you're willing to go with me, I could certainly use the backup. Uh, but I think I should lead because, I mean, I can move. Yeah. It's true. I mean, I mean Penny is my I'm lucky not... charm. So I don't want her to die. So if you think you will, if this, if you think this is changing some bullshit, I'll come to make sure you. Aw. getting your hands don't dirty get for me. Sentimental, you're a lucky charm. Good save. Yeah. Well. And just, I'll shoot anything that's unfriendly. Just be sh- uh, careful. These these creatures. They, if you uh, would need to fight them, they would be quite threatening with their innate spellcasting abilities and being fey. Most uh, a lot of fey are uh, have some sorts of uh, resistances against magics, and since that's what most of our party does, they would be quite formidable foes, I imagine. Never met a problem. Probably. Bullets and gunpowder and faith couldn't fix. Um, Mr. Alchemist, if, if all things don't go according to plan, could we just like fumigate the tunnel and then kill them? It's certainly possible, but we wouldn't would that need kill the a um, lot. Wouldn't that also we... kill the people we're trying to save? Yes. Yes. Well, except except if you if you want to make something that only knocks people out instead of killing them, you could oh, see, make idea. something that uh, or a darrow specific poison that'd be interesting. That what would do require I... probably years of research, though. If you want to make things that are specific against a certain race that requires years of testing, I mean. I could probably eventually do it, but like I said, that would probably take years of research. 
Eh, fair enough. I probably took them a long time to figure out that these mushrooms allow them to basically walk in sunlight. All right. So, count of hands, who's coming with me? I'll go. Oh, yeah. I need to see what's underground here. Fair enough. I also presume me and Smile should come along, just to be safe. But I am worried about my reduced, you know, being able to do things down there. Hmm. Well, uh, I guess I can help with the speech, but I don't really like getting close to these madmen. Even though I uh, do like their pursuit of knowledge, <laughs> their ways don't quite align with how I would do things. You know, like and if we could, integrity and stuff like that. If we could reach a peace treaty amongst these two, the Daryls could become a great allies at night against the undead. That is true. But we'd better hope we get to them before you know who does. Because they could make great allies for our enemies as well. I can fascinate them with the, with the secrets of gunpowder. Ah, fair enough. Well, if we ever do manage to found a kingdom, they would certainly make for great researchers in the ways of magic and things. But at a safe distance, right? Yes. Yeah. I want to stay back as far as I can without losing sight of my uh, friends and party members. Okay. So then the whole squad... I haven't heard a lot from Trazen tonight, but I assume Trazen goes in the hole as well. Yeah. He's mostly sleepy. <laughs> That's really So cool. he's usually treating... Uh, so he's currently treating us like a, one of those... Uh, Books uh, uh, which are read for that, and he's like listening into the story. <laughs> Fair enough. Okay, so then everybody going down the hole. It's probably the first bit is like you go to where the the branches and the roots have like tore up out the ground, and people with dark vision looks like there's about a twenty foot drop. People without dark vision, it's it's super dark down there. The like the roots of the tree go deep, shall we say. Uh, seems to be there's enough of a like natural ladder to get down that far. We have it, a torch, remember. We have a torch. But it would still require yeah. some like degree of mm. climb checks, basically. Yeah. Oh no, my one true enemy. Do we have uh, rope? Rope was this time we do. We because last time we complained about not having that, so this time we grabbed it. <laughs> that was the one thing that we took with us after the whole debacle with the tetzel worm. Yeah, it's fair. Okay, so even with the rope, there's still climb checks involved. It just the DC is a little lower. All right. And Tuxi's carrying uh, the torch. Is that right? Yes. Okay, cool. All right. Um, I mean, I was just going to also cast light on my um, uh, on my club. Gotcha. That works, too. Just setting light right. sources on people. Okay, there's my climb. Uh, how, does Smi how is Smiles going to get down this? Uh, climb checks with a penalty, basically. It's doable. Uh, I mean, well, Tuxie's gonna try. Don't worry, dogs always land on their feet. That, that's cat. Okay. Well, I guess he's fucked. Man. Tuxie made it. Indeed. So. Worst case, if some, uh, if, if, uh, if someone were to fall, I do have fun of ball. Fair enough. Okay, so... Hey, Tommy, do you remember my very first role in Pathfinder? I do not. Oh my god, yeah, I do. 
the negative three or whatever. Uh huh. Oh my god, yeah, that was that was in Carrying Crown. I, I yeah, I had a minus two. Oh no, that was in Rune Lords. Oh, oh, oh god, yeah, and you just took out a tent. I have a minus yeah. two here. That's the same thing. I was worried about that happening on this climb. Killed it. All right, so basically, we're waiting on the wizards at this point. Everybody else is able to navigate down. All right, let's hope I can do it since I can roll twice. Woo! Woo! Yeah, that <laughs> nailed <insane>. it. <laughs> I'm just like, I don't know if I can do that. Then claps down like a monkey. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, so it's a pretty easy one. If you're a medium creature, you're taking a minus two penalty on attack rolls. It's like, at some points, the ceiling's a little taller. At some points, you can almost stand all the way up, but in a lot of places, you're, like, dodging roots. Uh, you don't quite see where the ground goes, and it does slip down a little bit. And you guys are probably all traveling for about an hour before you start hearing the sounds of something chittering. It doesn't, like... It's not in a dialect. It doesn't sound like words. It just sounds like noises from like around a corner. Does it sound like the Darrow? It definitely sounds like it's got that like high pitched uh, cant, shall we say? But it doesn't really sound like words. More like a, more like a sense motive check. Like a sense motive check. It really just sounds like a d20 rolling. That's kind of chittery sounding, I guess. Yeah, it sounds like a, here's my, my Kraken dice. Hashtag not sponsored. Hashtag totally could be sponsored. I really like Kraken dice. They're so pretty. That's what it sounds like. Just just that noise. Uh, Devin is not super sure. Tuxi. Uh, Ragnar is a little better off. Anybody else? Before I start vomiting things. Uh, it's a sense motive, right? Please. Okie dokie then. <laughs> nope. Nah. Uh, Vin, you're not super sure at all what it is, but Ragnar, Tuxi, Elric, you, like, y'all look at each other. It sounds like excited, perhaps, prayer? Perhaps, like, general exaltation and enrapturement that kind of thing huh they have religion not sure if that's good or bad it all depends on the god or goddess certainly like the light sources would like well actually you probably come just short of the corner the light sources don't quite go around but if you were to move much farther forward like you're the only light down here. They would see you. Does any one of you have dark vision and can go without a light? I do. I do. Well, then probably Tuxi should check because uh, Eric looks at our dwarven friends and his heavy armor. I feel like you're not quite as good at sneaking up as she is. Huh. Who said I was sneaking? Well, you were supposed to just take a quick look without being noticed. I think that includes sneaking, right? I mean... The, with the whole not being noticed part? I was just going to walk right in and ask. Well, in that case, do we, do we need to not uh, stay back? at all i mean i think the i mean idea perhaps not to... to hurt their eyes but stay close just all don't right. come around the corner just yet what about me you can join me uh tuxi will pass the torch off behind her and she'll leave the mushrooms uh with uh those who are staying behind it, basically a contingency plan if things go south we threatened to burn the mushrooms to get away. Okay. And Tuxi and Ragnar head on forward. Yes. Yep. Uh, and Tuxi will sort of 
call out an undercommon. Okay. And so you do. The map is kind of irrelevant-ish, unless you're, like, moving forward, shall we say. I'll bring it up if we go to combat for everybody on YouTube. You move forward, you turn the corner, and the Darrow, they're rolling little stones into piled up bits of, like, dirt, and then the dirt falls over, and then they, like... When that happens, they become enraptured with joy and then go back and rebuild and do it again. And they turn and see you and both of them kind of just like scramble the short swords and they look whoa, at each whoa, other. Whoa. Hang on, hang on. I'm not here to fight you. So, what are you, what are you here for? We talked with your friends who were captured up top. We're here to negotiate the return of prisoners. I understand you are curious about them because you'd never seen them before. You wanted to sort of do some experimentation. We'd like them back. They look at each other, look back at the two of you, look at each other, look back at the two of you. They go... Like you also brought some of your mushrooms. Mushroom? That you had been looking for. Mushroom from you? Maybe. That depends on if we get the prisoners back. Um, bargain then. That was a bargain. Exactly. Okay. Hmm. They look at each other, look back, look at look at each other, look back. How do we know we can trust you? What are they saying, Tuxi? Oh, I forgot you don't speak undercommon. They're curious as to how they can trust us. Um, you could tell. Would, would you mind going back and bringing one of the mushrooms so I can show them? I, I will, but you could bring up to them that I could introduce them to gunpowder for them to study. It would be a trade of something else to study that's not alive as I go and get the other people. To get the mushrooms. Ah. Another option is uh, my friend here who is departing to get one of the mushrooms. Mushroom? Yes, he's also familiar with gunpowder. I. He thought that might be something you would be interested in studying as well. They kind of just look at each other, look back at you, look at each other, shrug. Eh, it was worth a shot. So you come back with the mushrooms around this point? Do I get them? Yeah, yeah, assuming the party doesn't stop you, yeah. Don't worry, guys, it's going good. I need the mushrooms that are so we have them. All right. And you guys can hear, like, the kill. humans can hear the conversation. And the, the desk walker as well. I return closely guarding a mushroom to my chest to keep them from... Grabbing it instantly. They do approach you. Hey, 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 step back. Mushroom, no, mushroom, no, mushroom, tra- mushroom. It's a trade, remember. We need the prisoners first. Okay. Mm, look at each other, look back at you. Look at each other, look back at you. Roll curb. Mm, mm, magister. Take you through the Magister. Blah, blah. And they, they begin okay, like, but... pulling on Ragnar's beard and trying to lead you further into the like cavern. Uh, uh, is this a good thing, Tuxi? Uh, <laughs> yeah, Meanwhile, so the guy who doesn't magister. understand what's going on is just having his beard uh, pulled on. Tuxi will warn them that there are essentially more of her group that are going to be coming around the corner with lights. So no lights! No, no lights! I think you should do what they say while my beard is at risk. Yank, 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 yank. Now we're all taking crap on okay. the Okay. Tuxi will look back at the others, tell them that uh, they don't want lights up ahead, so I guess we're going to the Magistar. Alrighty. 
Does anyone... Is it all light or just bright light? Like, does dim light bother them? Uh, there's not really a way, like... Well, no, you could make dim light with a torch. Just be very far back. Oh, yeah, and I think the fire beetles give off dim light. Ah. Uh, that's a good one. Start summoning fire beetles. You summon as... Let me bring it up real quick. Summon creature... Damn fire you, summoners! Damn you, summoners! Right the fire beetles' the glowing economy. glands provide light in a 10-foot radius, and dead fire beetles' luminescence... Uh, yeah, yeah, that works. Okay, cool. So... Okay, I figured, well, if we need it, because they don't last that long, they just work as long as they're summoned, which doesn't last that long outside of... Yeah, yeah, it's reasonable. Okay, so you guys are all led in deeper and deeper into the caverns. As that happens, I'm, I'm just kind of moving tokens around here. There are several knowledge nature checks. Yeah, just, just one knowledge nature check from everybody, if you've got it. In any case, yeah, as you guys are led farther that. into the tunnels at the behest of the Darrow, <laughs> You come to a room with flavor text. Oh, gotta scroll. The cavern gets like flavor text room. Flavor text room. Uh, there we go. That's the one. Come on, PDF. Rows of wooden pegs line the earthen walls, some hung with tiny, filthy cloaks. In the center of the room stands a rickety table held together with twine covered with a filthy red checked tablecloth and heaped with mounds of dirt and twigs apparently arranged to form some sort of map sitting at the edge of the map weighing down a scrap of paper is a little blood-stained it's hard to tell what it's made of but it looks like a little like little tiny statuette for the nature check as you guys are i'm still kind of getting the board together slash moving people there are a bunch of darrow down here in total those of you with dark vision count one two three four five seven of them in addition there seems to be its head pops out of a cavern like just on the other side of the room a particularly large centipede you don't see anything in the way of a prisoner and grab everybody else a large what centipede centipede oh those things i don't like those things i've run into those things before hi and devin i'm gonna put the light source on devin i have a light source as well because it costs light ah good enough as your average human, I'm very freaked out by a giant centipede. <laughs> it's a lot of things. Small is not one of them. The The leader stands on top of this, like, really crappy table with a bunch of dirt and gravel piled on it. And he looks at the assembled crowd and just, Ah, yes. You bring, I am told, the mushroom. Uh, could you give me vision too, Tommy? Oh, you do have dark vision, don't you? Uh, but only in exchange for the prisoners which you have captured, and we wish to have them alive. Hmm. Your prisoners are also up top. We have fed them some of the mushrooms, so they are at least comfortable for now. Uh, but we would like to return them to you. In addition to the mushrooms in exchange for the prisoners you have down here. Ooh, How do good... we know you will not betray us? The surface dwellers have caused us much, much. And he kicks over the dirt that's like assembled on the table and it sprays out everywhere. Undo misfortune. How do we know you are not working for them? How do we know they won't just come back down here well 
we are a third party. We have no really particular interest in who wins your war that's going on. We prefer to make peace so that you both can survive and prosper. That would aid us as well. In what way? Well, they are currently more pressing matters, at least on the surface. There are necromancers running amok, raising corpses. Do you say that in Undercommon? Yes. And what business is that of ours? Well, if you intend to live on the surface too, I think that's the goal, isn't it? It is not. Then... We intend to discern what the surface dwellers are, and we intend... And he pulls it, not unlike what's up, growing up top, one of the mushrooms, and we intend to harvest. Little more. If you do not wish the mushrooms so that you can head up top, then what do you wish them for? Diplomacy check. Er, mm, knowledge Dungeoneering. Knowledge Dungeoneering? Yeah. I do not have that, so I can get a 10. 26. Elric, however, the mushrooms seem to be, in some way, shape, or form, like... They are causing the Darrow to be able to function in sunlight. They probably want them so they don't have to necessarily raid by night. Oh god, you cut out like three times. Yeah, you did. I me. Uh, <laughs> me too. Well, I'm gonna I'm gonna relog real quick. The and Darrow. The Darrow, Darrow like, harvest. The mushroom causes the Darrow to. <laughs> It causes, like, okay. That's exactly what it is, Robin. Uh, causes the Darrow to, like, they can function in sunlight, so they probably want it so they can go raiding by daylight without getting sunburned. Hmm. Gotcha. Yeah, raiding. So you intend to raid the surface dwellers up top. But what about your people who they've already captured? Do you not want them back? They shrug. Hmm. And what if the surface dwellers were better to you alive than dead? Perhaps there would be knowledge that they could teach you. Hmm. What are you proposing? There's a diplomatic one. <laughs> Yes. Um, peace and cooperation. The dwellers up top are very proficient with magic, particularly illusion. I'm sure that would benefit you in some way. Further, my friend here, the dwarf, is skilled with gunpowder. I'm sure he would be willing to show you. You say gunpowder, and all of the Darrow just kind of look at each other. They clearly don't understand what that is. Ah, uh, it's... Well... You well, we can probably get some from Chewie and show them. It's, um... Powder, it's, it's sort of like dirt, but it's very... Flammable. It sort of explodes. It could be useful for mining. You say explodes, and their eyes all kind of light up Christmas morning. Could take some of that, yes. Ah, uh, the times in which I wish I could speak under common. What are they saying? I, I just want to talk. Translated for you. Ah. Uh. I'm sorry, are we sure we want to give them any form of gunpowder or anything of that nature? We could tell well, them... Well, they, they are underground, so maybe they'll blow themselves up. <laughs> Just cause a cave in, they it all It sounds die. like they're pretty intent on not staying underground, though. Hmm, fair point. Well, I 
think they're already quite skilled in magic themselves, so who knows how effective that uh, they would be with gunpowder. I'm quite uh, worried that they could bom uh, build bombs with it, that's true. I'm just imagining Adero casting darkness at will and like being sort of like a sniper or having two pistols or a pistol staying in darkness all the time while firing and reloading. There's a strange um, shadow moving through the battlefield and pain issues forth from it. With that madness, I'm more worried of suicide bombing. Hmm. Is Scrap concerned. like a whole barrel of that on, onto your back and then run into an enemy. I played Age of Empires too. Woohoo, me too. On Warcraft, like the Demolition Goblins. Oh god, yeah. <laughs> Woo! Our age is showing. I don't know any of what you guys are talking about. Exactly. You don't know Age of Empires? You don't know okay, no. I know Age of Empires, but I don't recall anything about... Um, uh, uh... Also, Lord of the Rings, Two Towers, The Orcs. Okay, that one I know. Who doesn't know Lord of the Rings? That's good. If y'all don't know Lord of the Rings, I don't know why you started playing D&D. &D. Exactly. Critical role, I, mean, I guess. Basically, the story is basically a D&D &D story. Mm. In any case, the Darrow continue uh, like talking amongst themselves and kind of like broken chitters. Not like... Eh, not chitters. That's the, not the best way to describe that. They're not really speaking in full sentences. So much as just like, hmm, 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 that kind of thing. I'm going to go ahead and everybody can see the centipede. I'll put the centipede on the token layer. Oh, that's big. It is not small. How does that even fit? What? There's a, like, you see it pop its head out of a really deep chasm on the other side. Like over here. So deep, in fact, that you're not entirely sure how the Darrow are crossing it. One of those squares is about, uh, yeah, measurement's about right. So it's about a, about a almost 20 foot chasm, like across. I wonder if it's their pet guys. I say in common. I really so, hope not. Uh, it's what's, saint. what's, uh, What's with the giant centipede? Mm. And looks over towards it. It kind of like turns back towards the head Darrow. Friend of ours. Feed it. It stays around. Does not eat us. Mm. What's with... And is that and they, where they, the prisoners went? They point towards smiles. What's with that? There's kind of like a, a general laugh kind of echoes through this assembled Darrow. Tuxi probably smiles and chuckles a little bit along with them, realizing the humor in the situation. I do suppose you have a point. I guess your pet is a little bit bigger than ours. Yes. Uh, but if you're feeding it, what are you feeding it? Did you feed it the prisoners already? Make it a policy check. Only the parts we no longer need. So the prisoners are still alive, or are they... In little bits and pieces. Yes. The, again, they, the Darrow all laugh. One remains. The rest, too fragile. Look like they're made of trees. Actually are made of people. The Darrow laugh again. Rather interesting. I don't feel like staying here much longer. Do I need to roll a sense oh, note to you. detect the, the hostility in that laugh? Mm, you can give it a shot. The language barrier is a thing. Uh, it's probably at least uncomfortable. 
you're not the vocal inflections of Undercommon alone, let alone Undercommon from insane demon worshiping monster thing. I shouldn't say demon worshiping. That's not a fair assessment. Uh, yeah, it's, insane it's, experimental crazies. Like it's really hard to put your finger on it but they all seem to be laughing like at the party like in your direction maybe it's like wow. German for you where you think it always sounds angry yeah I you think... know kind of I I didn't want to be like yeah yeah but I mean there's a lot of hard consonants in your language I think Tuxie has had an enough of this she's found out they've already killed most of the prisoners only one remains uh but you know what she's going to ask them to uh no she's gonna ask well you can oh, ask oh. them maybe yeah. if they so how do we know yeah, I got an idea. So how do we know that the prisoner is still alive? How can we trust you? I mean, you had a hard enough time trusting us until we showed you the mushrooms. You wish to see the prisoner? Yes, can you bring them out here? So be it. And these two Darrow drag this little friend to the edge of the chasm the centipede like instinctively turns and gets real real close to the gaffa who kind of just has this like his eyes are real wide and he's shaking but he doesn't say anything that's what i was afraid of she's not saying that out loud by the way that's me talking out of character um yes. Tuxi seeing the prisoner, sort of detecting the general mistrust and hostility. She is going to pop a uh, litter dust. Five, ten, that'll hit him. Five, ten, five, so it'll hit. This guy, this guy, this guy. Oh, wait, there's a big chasm, though. So we got to get those two somehow. Uh, how, how is the prisoner bound? Uh, how is the prisoner bound? Ropes around, like, wings are tied to their sides. Arms are tied, like, across their chest. Ankles are tied together. So she would have to incapacitate both the centipede and the guards somehow for him to get away. Hmm. That that's a that's a tough order. Uh hmm. I suppose if she acts in the surprise round, she could use another round the next turn to sort of free him a little bit. Uh, so, yeah, Tuxie is going to, oh, better yet, she's going to pop the glitter dust behind the guards there to free him. Okay. So he he has a path to run back. Okay. So unless you have some way to conceal your casting or like go around the corner, be invisible, they're all going to see you. And before it's cast, initiative is rolled. Oh, that's fair. So you wouldn't get the surprise round. Right. You would need to be invisible or stealth or hmm. something like that. The trump card mushroom. Yeah. Like, remember yeah. burning it? We thought yeah. about it. 
All right. Um, uh, if possible, we have I the fire would, beetles. Would like to not not have a confrontation right now with these guys. <laughs> well, I guess we do have um, a bottleneck, but still, they vastly outnumber us, and we are on their home turf. All right. Um, so Tuxie's got a call for the fire beetles. Okay. And she's going to send them to basically Ragnar's direction towards the mushrooms. Okay. So then again, this is all like if you want to do a thing that is hostile, initiative is rolled first. No, she's not doing something hostile right now. She's. Uh, essentially, she's threatening but not taking action. Hostile. Does that make sense? Hostile. Ah. Uh, so it can't just be an intimidate check. Mm -mm. Unfortunately, no. All right. Well, then I guess back to Glitter Dust. Okay. So then... Back there. That I happens. Mean, he's... Lots of folks see the encanting happening. Roll for initiative. Uh, she... Bam! Oh my god. Thank god this is relatively high. How in the hell did you get a 30? Jesus. I have a plus 10. I rolled a nat 20. I guess you're gonna get to do the glitter dust thing. Fair enough. Damn. Can I still get my token and vision or should I roll a perception? Uh, you should have. Oh, oh god, I never gave control of it to you. That's my B. Uh, yeah, I also slice the no vision part. <laughs> there you go. You don't need vision. You should be good now, Sven. Sorry about that. Can I no, I mean, with Elric? He had... You cannot. In the position. No, in the position. I don't understand why I would be behind right now, like Rivi in front, knowing our group composition. I just happened to notice that. My apologies. There you go. I made you space. Mm. So mm. people are where people are. Tokens oh, should have okay. been moved. I don't mean to be that guy. Uh, 16 and uh, 15. And a 19 and a 2, 3, 11s. That's easy. And 11 and 11. And then I just got to get the whippy boy. Go, go, whippy boy. Okay. Can mm, I get, can I get a familiar two, please? Uh, yeah, I can put your familiar on real quick. Did I ever make a... I should have made a sheet for it. That's my B. Or I did, I did. It's right there. Boom. Oh, my. That's I, I somehow I, yes, I set the map of the stolen lands as a token for Sven's familiar. Uh, <laughs> that that's not correct. That never happened. Uh, today he summons it's... the stolen lands. <laughs> Just the entire stolen lands coming at you. Oh God! Uh, I know it's not the right thing. I'm just gonna grab a random token, and it's gonna be uh, Vescavor. from Wrath of the Righteous. That's an impressive looking eagle. I know, right? Ah, uh, where the hell? Do, do, do. I forget Kane is logged on. I don't even think I'm going to use eagles tonight because we're all stuck underground. I'm thinking venomous snakes. The summons are always on theme. Oh my god, where are you? Oh, I'm looking for the wrong person. I was looking for Sven SK, but it's Trays in the Infinite. Trays on the Infinite! And bang, boom, oh bang. And did everybody get on the board? I see one, two, three, four, five. Smiles does not have his own initiative count. And dope. Okay. So, Tuxi, indeed, you are by a wide margin first. And possibly muted slash dealing with the baby. Oh. Wrong button. I definitely have to get that centipede, otherwise there's no reason for the glitter dust. I mean, they. we'll see what happens. Okay. So, glitter dust. 
right about there. 10 foot radius spread. All right, so it looks like I need three will saves. I think it's a will save. Four for the centipede, too. Oh, uh, got you. Okay, cool. What's my DC? Let's push a button. DC is button. Succeed. And in that case, the centipede just squeaks by. Ah, damn. And the Darrow are all three of them past the lowest add six. So again, just squeaks by with a 16 and 18 and a 21. Dang. They can't go invisible and. Uh, just reading. Certainly they can't hide. The explosion happens. If you want to flavor what you wanted to do with your casting of the spell, now is a great time to do so. Uh, Tuxie sees the prisoner and she looks back at him. Uh, back at the head of the Darrow. goes... Deals off. We wanted all the prisoners. You only have one left. And then pop, there goes the spell. There's probably a little bit of reaction from the Darrow as it's not like dim when the spell is cast and they all recoil and the the head one kind of like puffs his chest out and turns towards everybody and just, go, take them. The Void Reaver will receive sacrifice and Back here in the corner, this one is spending most of his time along with his fellow wrestling with the Gaflin and Devin. As I go grab... Um, summon a snake. I have one of those. Yeah, I got a snake. Um, what am I, so the centipede would probably be the biggest threat to us, so let's have him close to there so he can... Distract the centipede? <laughs> Okay, sounds no, good. I don't think a seven hits. <laughs> um, yeah, what's my flat footed like? I could see this thing being mostly dex. Oh, where, where is my centipede? Does not hit, unfortunately. Yeah, I didn't think it would. Okay, I'm done. Alrighty. They seem to get a little incensed when that happens. So this Darrow draws their weapon and goes running. 5, 10, 15, 20 in the direction of the Snick. And attacks the Snick for a 17 to hit. And 3 damage if it connects. This one is wrestling with Gathlin and Elric. I don't really want to fight, but I guess um, oh. um I think I will drop uh I will drop a sleep spell on the centipede because um move back. Okay. So casting sleep takes a full round, if I remember correctly. Really? Uh, let me yeah. quickly cast a spell. Casting time is one round, yeah. One standard action, it says. I mean, I'm looking at yonder SRD where it says casting time is one ah. round. I'm looking at the bad really? SRD, too. See, it's... I'll put it in yonder Discord. Boom, bang, boom. So certainly you can still cast it, but it's going to take a minute. That's problematic. A minute? I mean, it's not 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 a minute. I'm I'm sorry. That it will take one round, not one minute. That was that's my bad. <laughs> Problematic, yeah. Casting time round round. Mm -hmm. uh, 
Yeah, I think it will still do it for now. Alrighty. Meanwhile, at the Hall of Justice, this one's gonna go 5-10 and attack Ragnar. Damn. 22 to hit? Wow. So yeah, I think these things are a little bit... Yeah. Close. I rolled a 17. You leave me be. He take one point of damage. The Darrow comes and runs up, and the effect is probably more just like bludgeoning you in the side of the head with the short sword, but it does... It does indeed connect. This one. You is call that a weapon? <laughs> Snick. Don't tell them or Tommy's gonna crit you. <laughs> <laughs> Don't say anything remotely positive about combat or you're gonna get a times three crit. He didn't and learn anything from the trolls in Schloss Karamark. Oh my boom, god. Boom, boom. All right, Trazen, you're on. Uh, Snake takes two points of damage, assuming a 21 hits it. Yep, no problem. And in the infinite. Oh uh, yeah, I'm just thinking. Uh, every uh, all of my spells are rule based, so I don't think I will get one through. But I will cast color spray. Uh, can I move somehow? Uh, can I move? You could. You can move through their squares. Yeah. It's just a minus two on attack rolls for medium creatures right now. Or, or um, if I want to move my token, I move the map with it. That's kind of strange, right? Is that on the map layer? The map's not moving for me. But for me, that's that's a weird point. <clears throat> yeah, I would like to cast color spray in. Uh, not like this. Okay, sounds good to me. We'll save. Okay, ah, I... shit, gone. <laughs> you demeaned yourself. Hot <laughs> cast color spray. <laughs> he disappears. <laughs> like I said, I I can't move uh, anything. I just move the map. Uh, that's. Uh, you quite... might. Do you have shift held down or control or something? Uh, no. <laughs> I have no idea why that's happening. <laughs> just... You. Uh, I'll roll my will saves though. I See, I, I can't do anything. <laughs> I want to cast color spray at the three boys attacking <laughs> Chewie. <laughs> Got it. Uh, it just... may maybe reload roll twenty. I'm gonna, I realized I wasn't capturing the board. I'm gonna put the board on here real quick, just so everyone can see the squiggles. Oh, goodbye, squiggles. Squiggle, squiggle, squiggle. Trazen <laughs> gone mad after all this time. Trazen has gone too infinite. Ah, uh, what? I knew there? it. I knew it was crazy, that Trace of the Infinite. And my will save is plus six. So here we go. Okay. So then this one here is fine. They have three hit dice. So if you could roll a d4. Nice. Good. Blinded and stunned for three rounds. These guys, their eyes are like wide open with insanity and you do the color spray and they like hiss and stagger back. All done? Um, yeah. Five, ten. All right, Tuxie. We coming for you. 19 All right. Hit. How dare you start a fight, Tuxie? She's been real good at that this whole campaign. Yes, yeah, that's what I was thinking too. It's like, God damn it, not again. Yeah, that hits. One point of damage. Poke, poke, poke. Woo! Uh, this... you have damage reduction? I, I... Does that mean you don't take, take damage? <laughs> so this one's gonna... Whose turn is it? That one's turn is gonna... It draws a little tiny little crossbow. And we're gonna fire at Trazen for... An 11 to hit? Probably not so good. Uh, no, it doesn't hit. Meanwhile, this one is probably bleeding from the eyes. And um, so Tommy? Like, Sir? Um, when it was my turn, I rolled a 12 on my initiative. You don't go. Oh, sad day. <laughs> I don't know why you're uh, 
Oh, I just outright skipped you. Go Did ahead he? and go now. This might be. I got excited from color right. spray and drawings. Oh, it's okay. Um, I think I'll suit um this one here that's blinded since he can't do anything right now. So I mean, it'll be like boom. It'll provoke, but he has a fifty percent mischance, and it'll provoke from this one too. Okay, so if I suit this one here, it will not since they're blinded, basically. It will provoke. It'll provoke because you're firing a ranged weapon in their threat range. This one is, well, this one's stunned, so this one can't do anything. But this one here would be able to attack you. Alternatively, you could five foot step back a square. I'll do that. Tactical maneuver. I think I skipped Vin too, son of a bitch. Vin goes next. Where is your initiative? Um, I rolled it. Oh, okay. I haven't skipped you yet. Um, I still haven't skipped you yet. Are you... I think... I swear I clicked my I, token I see and rolled it. my initiative. I see it. I see it. I'll put you in. You oh. rolled an 8. There we go. That's, well, okay. that's weird. Okay. My apologies then if I did something there. It's all good. So you swing in the Warhammer, Chewie? I took the five fat step back to suit. Alrighty, so you rolled your warhammer though. Your gun does not add its strength. Well, regardless, oh. regardless, I didn't see on the dice. Is... Well, you would have. Well, that doesn't crit on a warhammer. Never mind, I lied. So it definitely hits if you want to just throw a d12 at the board. I gotcha. And uh, while he's rolling that vin, you're on. Alrighty then. Uh, it smiles uh, like move into here or something. The we're not exactly on direct tiles, so I'm kind of confused as to where everything. Uh, the is tiles are on the tiles are on the board. Like okay, so if if smiles moves here, then he's going to get an attack of opportunity from that guy. He's stunned. Okay then. But smiles this one you move, Well, um. Going this way? Yeah, moving through the Trazen Square. Okay, then uh, go for it, I guess. Alrighty. And it's 12 to hit probably isn't quite good enough. No. And Smiles is going to do a Heckam... Let me just make sure I put the plus one. Yeah, Heckam Bite. Heck oh. Smiles is not going to do a Heckam Bite. Bork. Then, um... You know what? I'm glad I prepared this spell today. Glad that I decided to do this. Uh, uh, I things. The one with the wings is the one we want to keep. I know, but um, I'm the one just you going... want to keep. I'm going to raise up my hands and say in druidic, bind them down, plants, so I may, we may cut away the the, oh, the guilty oh, infection. And I'm going to cast Entangle. Alrighty, there's, yes. there's enough roots and mushrooms and things hanging around. Yeah, go ahead and draw it. Alright, then uh, basically, um, so it's a 20, actually 40 it's a 40 foot. foot radius spread. Oh yeah. So I'm going to cast it, like, way from the back in there. Okay. I see. And just basically, I'm not going to hit the ones that are down here. But I'm just going to draw a quick freehand on the map and just kind of be like, I was going to kind of start, like, here. Okay. Like, basically, that guy right here is supposed to be on the edge of it. You got it. And I'll make it a reflex save, I think, right now? Uh, The first save is reflex, yes. Alrighty. So, yeah, one, two... Three, four, five, six, Darrow, rolling into a 14. Oh, I did a 1d20 plus six. Yeah, that Darrow is super bad. I'll roll five d20s. That's my B. Bam. Okay, so this Darrow is immediately entangled. This one is not. This one is entangled. God, uh... This one has a 13, I think, yeah, and is entangled. Then that one is not, and I think I need a 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. 1, 2, 3, 4, and the big one is not entangled either. 
Okay. But several of them do get grabbed up, and the centipede, the one we were the most concerned about, I think. Creatures that make their save can move as normal, but those that remove in the area must save again at the end of your turn. Creatures that move into the... Those that fail must end their movements. Entangled creatures. I'm just making sure. Mm. Question. Are these thorny plants? Uh, not really. Okay. What about the centipede? Centipede rolls a natural 20 and succeeds. Uh, the snake hey. will roll as well. The it's still difficult terrain, though. Yeah. The gafflin is stuck. The centipede rolls a reflex save. And speaking of the centipede. Um, Tommy? Yes. I wrote an 11 with my formula, but it doesn't uh, show in the turn order. Oh, sorry. I probably should have said something when I deleted it. Your familiar goes on your turn. Oh. Okay. So if you want to, like, if you wanted the familiar to sing, you can go ahead and do it now. Um. Yeah, I would like to move um, with it first. Okay. Is is there an option to like stealthy fly so he really. doesn't get detected? Uh, you can fly above them so they can't attack you, but they would be able to see you. Um, yeah, then I do this. Uh, how high is the centipede? Can he um, get to the ceiling? A uh, centipede could probably climb up the walls to the ceiling, yeah. Okay. Question. Yes. Would, would Entangle work on the ceiling in here? Yeah, any uh, walls, ceilings, basically the whole place. There's enough, Cause... not the mushrooms they want, but there's enough, like, plant life growing well, that's around. That's what I, that's, I, I was curious, I thought, but I wanted to yeah. ask. Always does. I, I do double move action. Okay. Uh, you say something if it's, uh, triggers an attack of opportunity, right? Mm, I would, it hasn't moved yet. The centipede is the bottom of the initiative, so it can't quite attack. Now's Perfect. the time. And I'm going to make a lot of will saves. No, I, I can't sing in the same round. I... Oh, oh, you double move, right? you double move, right, that's right. Okay, fair enough. Okay, so I guess as we hit 9.59, I'll let Tuxi have one round of combat. Tuxi can say some some sweet flavor text. Before uh, we... Does my spell resolve? At the start of your turn. Uh, okay. I thought it would be at the end of everyone's turn. Mm -mm. When it comes uh, all the way back around. I wish. You know, I can't say I've ever seen one of you before. I wonder what makes you tick. What do you look like on the inside? That's initiative. Whoop. <laughs> I wonder what you look like on the inside. Mo moves much slower than she did a second ago. Uh, an 11, unfortunately, does well, it might, does not quite get there. No, the Darrow is able to dodge out of the way. Not with the shiny sword? Even Aww. with the shiny sword. And uh, mm, we can. How many things? You're entangled and can't do much. Yeah, we'll run around to the sleep spell. Why not? Anything else? Nope, that's it. Alrighty, this Darrow here makes a quick strength check, probably. Yeah. To try to break out of the entangle and does so. Then difficult terrain wanders over towards this thing and then at the end of its turn is immediately wrapped up in the entangle once again to no avail the poor little thing and Devin uh, I'm a face. yes alrighty where do you want it help us with the numbers put it on the other side in this motherfucking game <laughs> other side other side uh, I can't, it's all blacked out over there. I can't see where shit is. Oh, gotcha. I'm just moving so I can see shit. Okay. Yeah, whatever would be, like, close to protecting uh, old Penny. Since I don't need... Or is, are you, are you 
who's threatening you? This guy. So yeah, you the just given guy. me. Uh, you just gave me. Flanking. Yep. Okay, sounds good. I will set up the token so flanking happens. Cool. Uh, the first snake. Um, so the centipede. The centipede's asleep. Centipede might be asleep at the start of Elric's turn. Not quite okay, yet. Okay, then let's move away. Damn it, this lighting is. Can we give my tokens lighting next time so I can see what they see? I should be able to see from where it is. Well, oh, no, it here. doesn't. It doesn't. It doesn't. And... You're right. You're right. Hang on. Yeah. Okay, Would uh, the snake have dark vision? Uh, let me check real quick. The snake also needs to make a reflex save. Snack. The snack has to do a save. Well, I can bring it up real quick. No, it has scent and low light vision. Okay, so then the snow, the snake can maybe see. Hang on. I will go to advanced. It does not emit light. It does have sight. Does it see? It does. I can see from then. Okay, cool. And you have sight as well. And control budget. Deal. Okay, should be good. Uh, also, I think all the things he summoned getting the celestial template, right? Uh, I'm not sure if they do from level two. They do. They do. Oh, fair enough. Because because celestial uh, template, because the celestial template adds uh, sixty feet of dark vision to creatures. Ooh, oh, didn't even know that. Is. I thought they got that at like thirty fourth. Fair enough. And so it was. Unfortunately. Yeah, it failed its deck save. And Snack is entangled. Oh well. Um. Can it still bite the one that's in front of him? Yeah. It just takes a little bit of a penalty. Nevertheless, a nine does not quite get there. Yep. Okay, no. then Snake 2 will bite the guy who's trying to kill Toxie. Alrighty. That's a little better. That's a little better. That's good. Five points of damage, got it. Yep, um, well that, the B6, that's four points of poison damage, and then he'd have to do a DC 13 fortitude save uh, for that one point of con damage. Mm, gotcha, okay, fair enough. I will go ahead and roll that really quickly. Bam. I rolled it, in, it's an 18, I accidentally GM rolled it. I can screen gap it if you don't believe me, but he passes. I believe you, and I don't care. Oh, okay, fine. I'm gonna... So that'll be it. All right, I'm gonna put Devin back in the square where Devin was at. You should have sight from your snicks now. That. You're fine. That's my be. I do have sight from a snick. Snack from the snick, the snick sight. I'll probably just attack with my minus two. I think Entangle's a minus two. I'm pretty sure, right? Yeah. So I'm gonna attack a snake and miss real bad. Then I'm gonna. Uh, I I think this one's just gonna. What do you even do? Attack the Gathlin, yeah, and miss real bad, and then get entangled. Yep. Alrighty, and now I'll make a will save, and Elric will do his turn. We'll call it for the night. But does the centipede fall asleep? If anyone wants to drum roll. Nope, oh, it does not. Unfortunately. God dang it. That was unlikely. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it was. Well, Elric has Elric's full turn, and then we'll call it from there. All right. Um... <laughs> well, let's let's try taking out the leader. Uh, let's let's drop a. Uh... Power with pain on that on that leader guy. On oh, that leader guy. Alrighty. For what is my current hit points? I think it would last for forty four. Yeah, yeah, it would. Alright. And if you want to roll the D six. For four D four rounds, Jesus. 
Well, so long. Ten rounds. For the next comp, for the rest <laughs> one, of the combat. Four, one, four. <laughs> yeah. Hey, you want to throw a d6 at me? For nice. two damage. For two damage, the Darrow begins bleeding out the ears, and that's where we're going to call it for today. Thank you guys for watching Tuxi start another encounter in the middle yes. of a social interaction <laughs> once again. The, sometimes the face has to also be the heel. That's a, that's a really bad wrestling joke, but it's all I got. We'll be back next week for more Kingmaker but Spoopy. Don't do drugs, kids. Stay safe out there. <laughs> Say bye, guys. Bye, guys. Bye. Bye.